We are tonight's entertainment. You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Excellent! Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Movie Mania podcast, where we talk films past, present, and future. I'm Sherman Trey White of Podcast Media, and joining me is the man, the myth, the legend. He's altering the deal. Pray he doesn't alter it further. <laughs> Bandit Incorporated. Do, 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 do. What, what? Hello, everyone. Hello. All right. Welcome to all of our <laughs> listeners. Of however many you are, I haven't had a look before the show started, but <laughs> roughly, roughly two, three thousand if you add up all the views and all the combined views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think last time I checked it, it was it averages out at about six hundred an episode so far. But which is great. Now that we're and on then, YouTube yeah. as well, that should hopefully well, that pick first up one. That first one's got fifteen hundred views or something like that. So yeah, which is great. I, I should Everyone probably. Apparently was... Sorry. <laughs> no, I, I was just I, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I was uh, for all of you like. I should probably say the reason I'm putting those up on YouTube is because there's YouTube Red, which is a new system that YouTube is bringing in where if people want to erase ads from YouTube, they pay yeah. like six bucks a month or whatever and erases ad. But it also allows people to download their favorite video into their phone so they can mm-hmm. watch it while they're offline and it's not using up the cell phone usage. So that means that more podcast uh, podcast type videos are going to be more accessible on YouTube. So that's why I'm uploading them all on YouTube now. <laughs> so for those yeah. who have YouTube Red, can download them in their phone. Um, most other people, I think, will probably just stick with iTunes. Yeah, it's easier to watch, it's, listen to it. It's, on de- it's definitely it's easier on iTunes, even SoundCloud. It's just download the app and listen to it there. Um, a lot of people were clamoring for it. Apparently, I get I, looking at the comments. There was a lot of thank yous, a lot of like thing of like I'm so happy I have like I have eight hours of bandit content to listen to. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's great. So, you know. Now you guys have something else to do in your fair in your free time. Uh Brent, how have you been doing, Bandit? I have been going well. I have been going very well. It's it's very great. tropical where I live. And oh, okay. it's hit the, the rainy season. So it's it's that kind of constant raining but still hot and it's just like that dank the muggy, yeah, muggy, like Dago, ugh. like Dagobah, yeah, yeah. It's it's like Dagobah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's I know it sucks that that's basically us in like April through September down here in the Tejas. Yeah. Um, but uh, luckily, it's it's November now, which means we're finally getting fall weather. So it, it's it's down to a nice crisp fifty eight degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not sure if that is in Celsius, um, but it's nice and cool. <laughs> I'm wearing my pullover James Bond style turtlenecks. And it's uh, it's lovely, uh, but ha- speaking of James Bond, I don't want to get into Spectre right away. But I've been very tired this entire weekend. I pretty much slept all day Saturday, and then got up for a brief moment on Sunday or the- today, I guess. And then I went back to sleep and slept a lot. And then I got up and watched forty five minutes of Duel because you after still going to see haven't Spectre, watched all of it. <laughs> Well, you know I what? Tried, don't I, even worry about it. It's been, I'm gonna keep going at it. It's been I weeks and weeks, and so yeah, don't worry about it. I started. I started this morning, and I and I clocked out right away. I'm telling you, oh. Spectre put me in such a mood of war. I was. I felt like I needed a nap after I saw Spectre. Spectre, <laughs> I put me to sleep. But we'll get to Spectre. Uh, speaking. <laughs> well, yeah. So for those who are wondering, um, Spectre is out in America now, but it's not out in Australia and elsewhere. Uh, so that's why we can't really cover it in this episode. So we're going to cover it yeah. next week. Because also by then, most people will have seen it. We can just do full spoiler. Yes. And pick it apart. <laughs> uh, and, don't, and don't go on Wikipedia because even if you don't click on the plot, they'll still give you the... <sighs> the, okay. the, the twist, right. if you even want to call it's, it exactly. a twist. Most people it, who... It's basically yeah. Khan from Wrath from uh, Into Darkness. But if you want to... He's not Khan, then he is Khan. Yeah, even though yeah, it's so obvious it, that he's Khan. Yeah, like if you don't know who it is, you don't care. And if you do know it is, you saw it a mile away. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyways, Bandit, let's get into the movie news. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. Cannonball! <laughs> okay, folks, so, uh, Warcraft trailer. We got it on Friday. Yeah. Bandit, uh, what, do you think of, what, do you, what do you think of the trailer? I'm a big fan of orcs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, it seems really interesting. I'm, uh, mm-hmm. this, do you reckon this will be the movie that might actually turn around the horrible track record that video game movies has? Or do you reckon Assassin's Creed has a better chance of getting that? It does have 
Assassin's Creed has Michael Fassbender, so. Well, I just think, like, I, I don't, like, with, with a movie like Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed, the, the game series itself, is already so cinematic. It already has that feeling of, like, I'm watching someone play a three-hour or a ten-hour movie, essentially. Mm. And with World of Warcraft, I, I never really, you know, I, I, I've never played World of Warcraft, so I can't, I can't really speak for it. But it never came across to me as something that was incredibly cinematic. So when I saw this trailer, my first thought was, oh, this is The Hobbit. Like I, I think a lot of the CG. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to say it's terrible, but I think like they're still. You can you can clearly tell that they're still touching up on it. Um, and I have I have faith in the director because I, I liked Moon and Source Code. But besides that, I really I don't have any interest in this movie at all. And this yeah. trailer didn't help. I think um like I should say I I have a bit of a bit of exposure with Warcraft. I <laughs> like I used to play it on mm. um like the very first version of warcraft that came out like the original thing that started all i played Mm -hmm. that played it to death got all the expansion packs played all them to death i got starcraft that came out after it played that to death Mm -hmm. and then i kind of stopped playing video games for a really long time (laughs) yeah (laughs) (laughs) and I've, i've picked it up again now so i've kind of missed everything that warcraft has become after that but yeah so i i know the basics and based off what i know from the basics and what i see in this trailer it's uh yeah, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty accurate. They've got yeah. the sort of hyper exaggerated, um, yeah, like you said, sort of Middle Earth type thing going on. But I do. <laughs> it looks just like the Hobbit. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm worried yeah. they might have made the orcs too gigantic though, because mm. um, like you see, there's they're like eight feet tall, roided out monsters. You see in the trailer, one of them picks up yeah. a horse and throws it at a couple of them. Yeah, they're, they're the Ninja Turtles from the new movie. They yeah, are, they yeah, are. Yeah. But I, yeah, uh, like yeah. I, because in the game, they're basically, maybe they're a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger than your regular human, but they're roughly the mm-hmm. same size. But they also right. have orcs, or, or is it ogres? No, it's ogres. The guys with two heads. <laughs> okay. And those are the big giant guys in, in their army. So, yeah, if they've made the orcs that big, how big are the ogres going to be? Are they going to be like I have no idea. King Kong I, I, sized? <laughs> yeah, it looks and, and my main problem with it is that, you know, you know me, I'm not one to dismay the use of CGI, you know. Clearly this movie is going to have a lot of CGI in it, but it just it looks like they like it doesn't look real. Like there's a shot where, you know, you have the shot of where the orcs are running at the humans and humans running at the orcs are all going, ah, and yeah. I'm like, this looks like a video game. Maybe that's what they're going for, but I feel like it's kind of alienating me as a movie watcher because mm-hmm. I was my problem with the Hobbit movies. I'm like, I'm watching a video game. Nothing about this looks feasible. I don't feel like I can touch this world. Yeah. You know? Well, the storyline seems like, well, it's, it's pretty accurate to the video game. In the video game, a portal opens, the orcs world is dying, a portal opens to our world. So they're like, we can escape and have a chance on this new planet. But of course, there's humans there and orcs being orcs, they just, you know, they, they do war. That's what they do. They just come over here and fight. So yeah. the aim of the game, if you're playing as the humans, is to beat them back through the porthole. But they also are kind of sympathetic. So it looks like this trailer is kind of like there's someone on the orc side and someone on the human side who is trying to work out a peaceful resolution yeah, but that's Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I was about to say that's, <laughs> that's what that very, is. Very Planet of the Apes. You yeah, know, they, they they even have that line in there of like you're fighting with the humans. I'm like I'm like this is Caesar love human more than ape. Like I, I like that line in that movie. Um, like, it, they're very similar. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not sure if that's really a. I mean, I think I think it's good that they make the orcs not just like mindless evil drones like they usually are. Yeah. But yeah, maybe. A different story would have been because that is very similar to Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> I mean, and, and look, this trailer, this is a, is, this is a, I don't want to say it's a, look, it's a teaser. It's the first trailer. It's yeah. the one that says, "Hey, there's a Warcraft movie coming out." But you know what? I, I don't buy that excuse. Else. I don't buy that excuse because people use that with the first Batman v Superman. Oh, it's just a teaser. All that means is it's shorter. It's got nothing to do with quality. You can't say oh, it well, sucks I because loved... it's a teaser. It That's sucks true. because wow. it's a bad teaser. <laughs> I don't want to. I'm not saying the trailer sucks. I'm saying the trailer doesn't give you a lot, and that's oh, yeah. because. Sorry, I wasn't really. Teaser. I wasn't really talking about you directly. I was just no, sort of I'm, ranting no, I'm, in I'm general. Just, I'm just making sure yeah. I have I have a stand in this argument. And back to that Batman Superman trailer. I love <laughs> that first trailer. 
okay? Just because it came out the same week as the Star Wars trailer, does that mean it's not a good trailer? Because that's a great trailer. No. You dropped that in January, that would have been huge. No, nah, the, the only didn't. reason people cared is because it was Batman and Superman. If if any other movie tried to make a trailer like that, they would have seriously hurt themselves. In terms that's of not a valid argument. That was an awful, <laughs> awful, 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 awful trailer. Saying that teaser. something is only Sorry. good because Batman and Superman is, it's like saying that that teaser is only good for Star Wars is because it had Star Wars stuff in it. It's it's not even, you can't even classify it as a teaser. I, I saw I it and I was like, so. what the hell is this? It's not even, It's you can't even technically classify it as a teaser. It's a short it tells that you establishes the tone. Nothing. It teases the audience. It tells you the tone is dark, that's it. It tells you well, nothing the tone about is. character motivation, nothing about the story. It tells you nothing. It's that's well, why did you it get sucked. that? Did you get that in the first teaser for Godzilla? Yeah. No, no, we didn't. All yes, we got was that this did. was dark. Yeah, you got dark. Remember- you got themes of like man versus nature. You knew that it was going to be Godzilla fighting these other monsters. That's what a teaser is supposed to do: give you a we glimpse knew- of it, but not tell you the whole knew- thing. <laughs> we knew that Dawn of Justice was going to have influences from Dark Knight Returns. We clearly saw that in there. We saw that there were going to be repercussions for what happened in the previous movies. You know, in the previous film, we 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 saw that things were things were going down. You know? No, we saw that in be- the next trailer, not the teaser. We we got we got a bit of it. We got Only a, a little bit, bit but. Yeah, I mean, we got some ridiculous. good Alfred, you know. We, we, I think, dude, that. Why do you think that the second trailer that came out after that was three and a half minutes long and not two and a half minutes long? You know why? Comic, because they know footage. that the last one sucked so bad that no, they had to compensate for footage. it. That's why we got an extra that... minute. Oh, I because they know that last teaser footage. was monkey guts. I was going to say okay. something else, but <laughs> it's beef okay. shank. That's what it is. It's beef shank. To quote okay. your line. <laughs> Anyway, okay, anyway, well, so I, I didn't really. I, I, I keep forgetting that Donna Justice is your genesis. So um, I keep forgetting that you want that. We're not allowed to talk so about bad. that anymore. Yeah, we're not. There's a cap on that. <laughs> I keep forgetting that you want that movie to fail so bad. And you, and for someone that talks about having a small minority of voice crush a movie, yeah. uh, you really do. You are incredibly vocal about Zack Snyder's directing choices in, in this Man of Steel uh, <laughs> follow up. It's because I care. It's because these characters matter to me. You yes, know? well, it's because I care and I don't want people to make crap movies for the Chinese. But we're moving on, moving <laughs> on. And speaking of Star Wars, we've got a ban on that. You're not allowed to talk about it. <laughs> yes, we're gonna get we're gonna get emails. But but uh, anyway, anyway of, the reason yes. that we went off into that tangent was so like yeah, people saying oh the teaser oh, it was okay, it was a bit weak, but I don't think you can excuse that just because it's a teaser. That's that's the thing I was trying to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we well, on. I just I, I'm just not excited for it. I honestly like I don't have any, you know. I don't have any any excitement for what's going to happen next yeah. in the Warcraft movie. Me, me neither. I, it could be a pleasant because I felt the exact same way about Dawn of the Planet of the Apes when I first saw those trailers. I'm like, I mean, it looks okay. Really, um, you weren't you weren't that interested yeah. in seeing it? Oh, I just I was interested in seeing it because I, I I liked the first one, but but when I first saw that trailer, my first thought wasn't I I wasn't as super pumped as the rest of the world was. You know, it wasn't until after I saw it that I said, that is a good movie. You know, I, I felt, I felt, it's the same way like how I felt about the X-Men films. You know, when that, when that X-Men Days Future Past trailers came out, I was like, you know what, it looks, it looks pretty good. You know, I, maybe because, you know, I loved First Class, you know, and I, uh, and I liked the Wolverine. So I'm like, I don't know. I just, I have this weird thing with trailers where they really kind of have to try hard to get me in. Unless it's Star <laughs> Wars, in which case they can just, yeah, yeah. <sighs> play that music and I'll be in. <laughs> okay, uh, speaking of Star Wars. Yes. There was a lot of stuff that happened. Let's start with uh, this thing called Force for Daniel. Uh, if you guys don't know, there was this uh, this man who was diagnosed with cancer, like a really like rare terminal cancer in July, and he wasn't given that much longer to live. And so his wife started this campaign to, so that he could see The Force Awakens early. Um, oh. And, you know, uh, Mark Hamill retweeted it whenever uh, – John Boyega, Daisy Ridley, they all retweeted it up. And eventually, you know, Daniel got that call from J.J. Abrams and Lucasfilm, and they said, hey, hey you're going to get to see the, uh, the Force Awakens. And they sent him the cut of The Force Awakens. Um, Aww. And, yeah, and I'm sure he signed in. Yeah, and, and, and I, have, I have mixed feelings on, on that. I think it's incredible that this is, this, this is what the Internet should be for, yeah. things like this. You know, yes. things like sick people getting what they need because 
you can be like, well, he just got it because he's sick. I'm like, yeah, he's gonna, he's, he may not be here when that movie comes out. Even, even if it, he is, he may not be able to get to that theater and be with, uh, in that crowd of all those people without having the sickness kind of flare up. You know, he may not be able to handle all the loud noises, you know, but he's a, he was a huge Star Wars fan. And, mm. uh, and, but my, I think my only kind of, not concern, but kind of uh, trepidation with this whole thing is that what, what about the people that are also sick with cancer, who are also Star Wars fans, <laughs> that maybe don't have, you know, that maybe, you know, also can't have that big of a campaign around things, you know? Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, if, if, another, if, like a, if a 12-year-old kid comes out or a 45-year-old man comes out and then says that he has cancer, he wants to see the movie, where is the line drawn? You know where is where is it drawn at? You well, know, look, so. look at you. You just you're like oh, I just got to find some way to hate this. I just I just <laughs> helping I just, someone who's we, dying I, with cancer. I got I got to find some I'm way. I'm just to... saying we need to we need to be we need to understand that you know some people not necessarily want to take advantage of this, but there are going to be other people. It, it's like it's like whenever like you have a project due at school and you turn in your project and then some other kid comes in and does like like it's like you're, you're supposed to do a poster board but someone else does an exhibit like a flat poster board like 3d models and <laughs> they get like the a plus and you see yours and you're just like well that's a c because you didn't realize you could take that to another level you know there's there's a sick kid out there that's that's going to be dead by no, by late november and he's not going to be able to see force awakens you know and, and it's just it's a it's, it's a thing that crossed my mind yeah but so JJ Abrams, we're blaming you for everyone who has cancer. It's exactly. your fault that's, now. That's my point. Because if they don't make it, <laughs> 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 you know, I think I think JJ Abrams though. Um, I remember back with the Star Trek 2009. I heard a story about there was a similar story. A guy with cancer. I think he was an older guy. who was yeah. a big Star Trek fan, and he let him see Star Trek 2009 before it came out. So he's, yeah. he's a good guy, Abrams. I like him. Yeah, no, I, I'm not saying that this is a terrible thing that's happened. I love yeah, that yeah. this has happened. I think this still this shows my I saw a faith in humanity. You know, then I turned to MTV and see Miley Cyrus. I'm just like, <sighs> but this shows that there are still good people out there in the world. Yeah. Uh, I just I like I said I had one trepidation with this with this whole ordeal. Okay, <laughs> okay. moving on. Uh, the international trailer also dropped on Friday. Yes, the Japanese yeah. trailer. Yeah, the Japanese trailer. Your thoughts, Bandit? Was really great. I really enjoyed watching it. Um, yeah. Feels a little strange that they, they released a third one, though, don't you think? Yeah, I, I think exactly. it caught us all off guard. We're all like, oh. Yeah, this is the fourth trailer that they've had, yeah. um, and, like, uh, which is weird because you would think J.J. Abrams is not the kind of guy that releases four movie trailers. No, um, and it's weird it was and, so and, different. Like, I understand you got, you know, you have different versions for international, but this was really different. This so was, was a like, whole new oh. trailer. Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. It showed a whole lot of new stuff, and it's we had, like we it's... got a lot more dialogue with with uh, with Ray and yeah. you know, and and it's just I, I don't I my only I feel like I've seen too much. At least that's how I felt. Yeah, that's how I, I, I felt know what you Saturday. feel. I feel the same. It's like it yeah. certainly hasn't diminished my enthusiasm, but I felt no. like it peaked after the second one. It couldn't get any higher, so bringing out another one just kind of feels like oh. Yeah. You know, yeah, <laughs> it certainly doesn't diminish, but yeah, no, I, I wouldn't have minded if they didn't release this. Like, I think, I think it was a moment where I saw Kylo Ren's lightsaber go up against Ray's face. That's when I was just like, oh, I didn't want to see that. No, yeah, which was which was my big concern with the third trailer that came out on on Monday Night Football. I said, I don't want to see something that I, I that's going to ruin the movie for me. And look, that shot's not going to ruin the movie for me. Mm. And I feel better about that shot because we've seen like. My main concern was that I was going to see a money shot that I would see later in the movie, and then, but that like 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 there would be a scene, kind of like a horror movie where you see the scare in the trailer, and then you're watching the movie and you're seeing the scene build, but you know what the scare is going to be already, like you know you know what the money shot of the movie is going to be already. So I wasn't I didn't want to see all the money shots, yeah, but yeah. luckily in the TV spot that that came out uh, on today this morning that I sent you, did you watch it? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. They they kind of fixed that by at by finishing off kind of what that confrontation is going to look like, where you know we're Ray shooting the blaster and Kylo Ren's blocking it with his lightsaber. So I think my my worries were resolved. So yeah, yeah. Well, I think um, it's interesting though because you know you talk about the money shot, like just in the trailers we've seen so far, there's a lot of money shots. Yeah. So it seems like whether it's intentional or whether it's just J.J. Abrams. You know, he's obviously 
putting his whole heart and soul into this. But it yeah. seems like the whole movie is just a whole series of money shots. That's what I'm thinking. Like, this is gonna be this is gonna be like the Fury Road of Star Wars. Yeah. In which like oh that's a good, like, ex- good expression. Like yeah. the whole like he's like they've been banking this for 20 years. Yeah. JJ Amos was like was like six years old and like oh what if, what if I did this what if C-3PO did this you know and now he's just being able to put this whole visual just beautiful k kind of like the, that that official poster just beautiful chaos on the screen and it, and it looks really good um yeah. and however, you know what is like yeah the the more the more i think about it like because I've, I've been thinking about star wars like every day yeah <laughs> it's, i can't get down it's my been head a, it's been a star wars filled week it's it's been yeah yeah everyone's going star wars crazy and like mm-hmm. my what it should be is for the other star wars videos they're getting more and more views leading up to it so i was like finally it's finally paying <laughs> off all that stuff yeah did, did you see the posters the there's the been more posters, posters that the well, there's there's been like character posters that came out. Um, oh, that one where it's it's basically just close up of their face, and they're each holding yes. like Han Solo is holding a blaster, sort of up right in front of his face, like in front of his nose. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just, I, yeah, I, I think those are cool. Ray's got her stuff there. Yes, yes. And Finn I has think that, the that staff saber. Was it the lightsaber? Yeah, Finn, with Finn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finn's got the lightsaber. Yeah. Um, that that staff is important. I'm, th- I'm telling you, man. She's Luke's kid. Oh. She says it in the trailer. Yeah. She's like, I know all about waiting for more family. And I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. My, that's my that, Michael that's Kane what accent, I was going to say before. Is um, yeah. Like we, the more I think about it, the more sure I am that what we spoke about the other day, that um, Kylo Ren's master is going to be Darth Plagueis. It's probably yes. going to be Andy Serkis who's probably going to be mo capping yes. Darth Plagueis. The more I think about it, the more sure I am. Because I also thought, I was like, Kylo Ren, he's he's obviously, you know, an imposing villain. But at the same time, mm-hmm. he's a very young guy. So it's hard to believe that a young guy is already running an empire. You know, he'd have to have someone above him who's a bit older and more experienced. Right. Like he must, right? He's what is he like twenty mm-hmm. or something? He couldn't be running well, an empire. I, so I, I'm thinking maybe mid to late twenties, like twenty six or something. Yeah, yeah. you know, but a little definitely older than not older probably thirty, I'd say. But but yeah, so like he's got to have like a plagius or somebody who's older and wiser who's helping to run things. And like, yeah. who are you going to have that's more uh, that's that's a better villain than Sidious? Sidious well, was. Yeah. Plagius exactly. is the only well, person you get, that could the, be. you get the guy that. Yeah, I said Plagueis is the only person who could yeah. possibly match up to Sidious, but he'd be a great choice because he's still a very different kind of character. Uh-huh. He's evil, but his goal is not so much power but knowledge. Mm-hmm. So, and that makes for a much more interesting character too. Yeah, so. and, and this, I think, like, so my guess is that she is a Skywalker. Like she, like she, well, like even even in that TV spot, the the tagline, like every, uh, what was it, every every generation has a saga or something has a story. And so like, I think they're really pushing the point of like, this is the new generation of the Star Wars movies. You know, we had the originals and the prequels. These are the sequels and these are going to be these new ones. Um, you know, and so I'm, I really think like, I think that she's a, she's Luke's kid. And I think Han put her on Jakku after Luke went into hiding. Um, and so yeah. now she's been, she's just been waiting there waiting for someone to come back and get her. And I, oh, I just, <clears throat> I'm excited. I got, I've got my tickets. I'm gonna <laughs> be there. I'm excited. I'm sitting. The IMAX screen. Nah, I'm excited. Yeah. Um, <laughs> however, however, there are people who are not excited for mm-hmm. Star Wars. Uh, Fox News. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the oh, this. You you sent me this. This really got my blood boiling. I yeah. Sorry, you go ahead and I'll I'll save my ranting well, energy. Well, let, well, let me let me explain <laughs> to the people that don't know. Um, first of all, if you're one to follow the uh, the uh, hilarious adventures of Fox News, uh, they're basically uh, George W. Bush, but every evening. Uh, it's yeah. fun to sit back and watch them just just be completely biased and throw out just some beef shank opinions and just just horrible. P- putting out um, surveys of like, do you think Barack Obama is a bad president or do you strangle kittens? Let's let's <laughs> see what the public decides here. Should yeah, they see his birth certificate and it's like eighty eight percent like, well duh. Right? Everyone <laughs> everyone that watches your stuff it has the Confederate flag on their <laughs> shoulders. In the background. Yeah, like <laughs> is no is wonder. Fox is Fox the same uh the same network that has Bill O'Reilly? 
Uh, I would imagine so. I I, yeah. I could be wrong, but I know I like because I I think there. Are, I feel like I might have mentioned wanna... to you before, but I actually saw Bill O'Reilly like on some YouTube videos. But I actually I didn't think it was real. I thought that was yeah. an actor playing a parody of people like that. Yeah. So I thought it was a joke, and I was like, yeah, no. <laughs> "It's really funny." But then as yeah, I watch no, more, I'm like, "Oh my god, this is an actual real person who's acting yeah. like this." See, here's I couldn't I, believe I, I he was real. I don't want to get too political with the whole news campaign and the whole Republicans and Democrats. But I think I think there are extremes on both sides. You have your Bill Myers, uh, and you have and you have your Fox News. I think are the big extremes on both sides. Yeah. Both get really ridiculous at points, and both really don't like see an eye to eye on things. Yeah. And then you have Stephen Colbert. I don't know if you know who Stephen Colbert is, no. but he's like you, you. If you look him up, and he's I don't know. He really likes to not play both sides, but really he really likes to poke fun at both sides and just point out how ridiculous politics is. Then that being said, Fox News, uh, they did that. There was this video came out of uh, these two, of the two Fox News co- uh, hosts. Oh, these, they brought in this yeah. Indian, this internet radio talk host, I guess I forgot his name. And to talk about the Force Awakens breaking uh, internet ticket records, yeah, or, or to and, well, at least that's what that guy thought he was there to talk about. Really, he was there to be laughed at for five minutes straight by these two idiots <laughs> who, for some reason, can't believe that the largest, most successful franchise in all of movie history. Well, why? Why is this a thing? Why are there wait, so why, many people why interested? Why are people what? that are wa- that are blocking around walk that they used to? <laughs> Block, but like you what said, is uh, wrong with people around the blocks in the seventies are now selling out tickets. What? These what? Multi generation. What? What is, is this Star Wars that you speak of? I've never heard of it before. Seriously, yeah. they're like, like "Why like, are you, you know interested what, you... in seeing this?" And the guy's like, "What do you mean, why? It's Star Wars." But they, he's like, Ugh, just. It's... And he's like, he's like, yeah. And the, and the chick's like, well, there's thirty thousand movies, and they're all out of order. I'm like, shut up, shut up. <laughs> you know how many movies there are. You're Fox News. I'm sure. I'm sure you called Star Wars racist at one point. I'm sure. I you, uh, listen. Uh, the people, and the guy's it's... trying to explain what's going on. And yeah. They're really not letting him speak. And and they talked about this on the show Collider Jedi Council with a. Uh, John Campy and Christian Harloff. They talked about this event, and Christian Harloff was very much about how disrespectful these people were, yeah. and how look, it's okay not to like Star Wars. That's completely all right. But don't be I a don't like, dick I don't, to somebody. Exactly. Don't be a douche about it. Yeah. You know, and uh, right. See, these kind of people really grind my gears. Because here's the thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> this guy that they're talking to on that Fox News show. Granted, he might have an entire room of with a thousand different figurine versions of Anakin Skywalker in his house. Fine, you might not understand that, but I guarantee you that chick who's sitting there has a room of her house filled with 500 different pairs of shoes. I think that's insane. To me, mm-hmm. that is insane. But hey, that's what she likes. Fine, go for it. The the guy, the host of the show, I bet you when his favorite football team wins or whatever, he goes crazy. But I think that's kind of stupid. I don't care at all about sport, but whatever. So uh, it's exactly you. the preach same it. thing. Preach it, preach it. Like they're Everybody's like, a like, nerd for something, whether you're a nerd for fashion, you. whether you're a nerd for sport, whether you're a nerd for Star Wars, it doesn't matter. Everyone's a nerd for something. Just don't be yes. a dick to someone because they're a nerd for something that you don't like. And you know what else, Fox News? If you need to actually have someone explain to you why something like Star Wars is so popular, then the joke is actually on you because you are so out of touch if you even had any semblance in your head as to... If you even knew how out of touch you were, then that would be something. But you don't even know that. Yes. Didn't Fox Sorry. own Star Wars? <laughs> Didn't Fox own Star Wars? <laughs> they had Star Wars since the 70s. Like, seriously, how do these people not... Oh, man, it's it's just so amazing. They go, to Disney for, they go to Disney for three years, so I'm expecting Paramount now to have their own news channel and be like, "Why is the Avengers so popular? Like, didn't you have the MCU for like four or five years? Like, what is and <laughs> and, I, and this the equi- this is literally the equivalent of a bully going up being like, "Give me your lunch money, nerd," you know? Yeah, and they yeah. go in to talk about their dad about football or something like like this is yeah. this is really <laughs> ridiculous. Like, well, I, I was I felt I was a little. I, I felt the, sorry the, the, for that guy because I think he obvious. I think he just thought he was there to talk about some of the facts and figures around how good this trail is doing and all this sort of stuff. And I don't think he was expecting to run into an absolute ambush. No. 
And he was and he was he's trying like, his best to like kill, like keep the mood up. Like like he's like, I got an extra ticket, maybe you can go. And she's just like, No, no, I won't. No, I'm like I'm like, you know what? You can go get in that hall <laughs> over there. Just go sit in your corner, Miss Shimkus. <laughs> Uh, it, and like, there's a you can in the background you can see this one guy like looking into the window, just looking really upset. And a lot of the yeah. comments of the video were like, he felt a disturbance in the force. <laughs> so, so, he could he sense a like, disturbance like, in the force. Yeah, he could sense the hatred, like the Sith rising again. It's it's like, amazing yeah. that in these nerd friendly times, when all of the billionaires in the world are mostly nerds, that you yes. can still get people this ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> and he, and people are like and the guy's like and the 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 talk host like the, the guest they bring on is he's just like star wars is it's the story of good and evil like like he's really trying and and, yeah. and the the male the male uh, host is just like he's like ah oh, come on good for evil we like we haven't seen that a hundred times and then the girl's like yeah like every movie ever i'm like you're what it's what? star wars <laughs> it's star wars it's star wars Oh, uh, like yeah these... you, look you don't have to like star wars that is 100 i'm not saying that i'm you might, you might want to make this a video i'm yeah, not yeah. saying that I, i'm saying that you can't you can't make someone you can't antagonize somebody for liking star wars yeah i don't like the hunger games i just don't but i don't go around antagonizing people calling them stupid for liking the hunger games yeah, yeah. i don't <laughs> all right it's it's they're not do, but... it's okay. <laughs> no no i'm just joking <laughs> no yeah that's 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 the moral of the story don't be like fox yeah. nudes if someone likes something you don't like just who cares uh, god <laughs> yeah i think i'll make a video out of that i'll take the actual clip and i'll yeah. can, you know insert stuff <laughs> i like i like jeremy john's tweet about it and he's like whenever he's just like why because fan four stick i'm like that's one that's perfect I love that. I don't you know, get it. Like, what do you mean? To because of... Well, because, you know, Fox is wondering why Star Wars is so successful since <laughs> Jeremy Johns just won. Why? Because fan four stick. That's why. Because no one saw your movie. Yeah. We all waited for Star true. Wars. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Jeez, man. Uh, okay. So, uh, I think that's all the news I have written down here. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Bandit, we had some homework. This week... Each one of you has a homework assignment. You're going to go out, you're going to start a fight with a total stranger. You're going to start a fight, and you're going to lose. All right, so my homework before my homework was to see the movie Duel, uh, which was the first one by Steven yes. Spielberg. Just, just before and... you start, I can say my homework was to see Steve Jobs. I can't. It's not on in any th- cinemas here. I don't know whether that it's already quick. been and I've missed it, which yeah, is that weird. Was quick. But, um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll have to wait until... Um, it becomes available through certain services. <laughs> certain services, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, and my but I, I will do it, Steven's, I will do it. Yeah, yeah. My, my homework was to see uh, Steven Spielberg's, one of his first films, uh, Duel, Duel. Uh, which, got him, which got him Jaws, which is basically the story of this man who is being terrorized by this truck. I have seen the first 45 minutes of Duel, and I have to say, it, it, it's very... It's very indie, um, if anything. It's very indie. It's very 70s. Yes. It's very slow. But it's also tense at points. Um, I don't know. Like, like, I, can I'm can I just say, if, if you're only going to watch this in installments, it's better you don't watch it at all because you'll just end up <laughs> hating it. Because the whole point of the story is it's a slow burn and it builds up. So if you're not going to watch it all the way through, just don't even bother. <laughs> well, then tell me. Well, then how does it end then? Since I'm going to apparently. Well, it ends. It, it ends in this really epic because it builds and it builds and it builds and it's a game of cat and mouse between uh, this guy in his car and this truck driver whose face we never see, which is really good. That was another clever Steven Spielberg type thing. Uh, I think mm-hmm. Steven Spielberg was 28 when he made this or something. It was the very first, oh. uh, very first movie he ever made, but. Um, yeah, he, he's sort of like, there's this guy, he's on this long road trip because he's going to a job, and this truck starts harassing him on the road, and the, it escalates and escalates and escalates, and it eventually ends with this showdown <laughs> where he sort of, um, he gets the better of this truck and ends up, the truck goes off a cliff. That's basically how it ends. Okay. But it's like, yeah, it's it's all about, it puts you in the shoes of this guy, and yeah, it's... It's great. <laughs> it's really good. It's really good. Like I said, I, I took a lot. Of, I, I slept a lot this weekend. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, but in other news, uh, which really, I guess, kind of put me on my sleepy uh, status, 
uh, is that I saw Spectre this weekend. Wait a minute. Uh, are, I caught it. You, I was, I was, hang on, you're putting huh? news in the homework section? What do you mean? <laughs> what? Oh, okay, whatever. This <laughs> we're counting this homework. Fine, whatever. Spectre, let's well, talk I mean, about it. Well, I mean, you don't want to like, save it for I, next I, week. I, That's the episode. Ah, huh, okay. I don't. I you know. You, I don't want to give like a quick review. Of, uh, I'm sure if you want, yeah, go for it. <laughs> well, just <laughs> you know, not? I just I I didn't like it. But uh, in, in short, I guess it was I'm, very I'm slow. I'm shocked that you didn't like it. Yeah, it, it, no, Skyfall. just because it was. It didn't have a lot of action. It didn't have a very compelling story. There wasn't a lot of good character about it, and. It felt like like someone trying to make an art house movie with the Bond franchise, okay. and I'm not a fan of that. Like there was a lot of lingering shots of nothing happening, and I got bored, so I, I was very tired. How, how long did it go for? Like two hours? Two hours twenty eight minutes. Oh, that's yeah, you felt you felt there. every second. I'll tell you that. Man. Uh, yeah, and and people are like, well, it feels like classic Bond, so that's okay. I'm like, no. That's not okay because if the best part of your movie, much like Jurassic World, if the best part of your movie is not the actual movie itself but the references to its past, then that's not a good movie. That's a good throwback, and so that that's not an excuse for the movie being poor. Yeah, uh, you know, J- James so. Bond movies, even when they're seventies cornball fests, they're exciting yeah. and they're entertaining. Yes, even if they're stupid, they're entertaining. There's a Moonraker. Yeah. Nothing. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's completely yeah. ridiculous, but it's fun mm-hmm. and it's enjoyable. Mm-hmm. There's no excuse. Like, like Casino Royale is dark and gritty, but it's enjoyable. It's thrilling. And There's that's no excuse. Of Daniel Craig. Oh, Daniel yeah. Craig really like plays that up. Like he's very much. He did I think good he's in that. Most that charismatic one, yeah. in Casino Royale. Yeah. yeah. But also, like, have you seen like Daniel Craig? Not related to the movie, but like, well, is related to the movie. Like in interviews and stuff, he's been really negative about well, this movie. No, duh. Like, like you can, like, I think they they went back and reshot this whole third act. Yeah, I remember. Like, and and you know, and they they started production like and like last November. So this movie really has been through the ringer, and they really they they really rushed this production. Um, and you can tell on screen, like, like nothing happens for like the middle act, and I I, I just. You, no wonder he's oh. so bitter about it because possibly his last outing because Sony's you know lost the rights to it. Possibly his last outing is, is just so mediocre. Mediocre. I sent you that. Uh, Scott, <laughs> is that which, which I, I wasn't saw. sure what the yeah. mediocre was like, a reference mediocre. to. Mediocre. Mediocre. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. You know, it's just I don't know. But the the opening scene's great, and then the title sequence is great with the song, and then it just kind of keeps going downhill from there. <laughs> and yeah. Wow. Well, man it's just that was specter it's weird because you would think that if they're trying to do more of the nostalgic stuff for it then if anything it should be more fun it shouldn't be less fun because if they're adding more cheesy stuff it's just slow it's just it's slow it's slow moving but it's not tense like there were certain parts of the this last mission impossible movie that were slow but it was because they were building tensions, because they were establishing how dangerous this man, this villain was. And the villain, Christoph Waltz and, and Spectre, without giving anything away, you know, he's wasted. He really is. Like, nothing. He really yeah. does nothing. You know, he's not like Silva or the Sheaf, you know, or, or going back let, to the let classic us, ones. Let us just repeat that. Christoph Waltz, playing a James Bond villain, is wasted. Exactly. How do you what? How? How do it's you like, mock that up? How do you do that? It's, it's do almost you... impossible to not make a good villain with that combination, but somehow they managed to do it. It sounds like just do the Jew hunter in James Bond. Yes. Like just make just do that. Like he's like he, he, you wrote, it, it's written by itself. It wrote itself, but no, they they decided to do what they did, and I was like, okay, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well. <sighs> All right. So that's Spectre. <laughs> So, do you want to push your head with Jewel, or do you not want to bother? Uh, I'll, 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 if you, I'll revisit it if you want me to yeah. revisit it. It really doesn't matter to me. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, at least watch you the know. end of it because I, I just thought because you're an aspiring like filmmaker, and since yeah. that was Spielberg's first one, and you can see a lot of the techniques he uses and all that stuff, and Spielberg oh, himself yeah. said he filmed that in 13 days. He said if I had to go back and do that now, even with all the research resources i have even with all the experience i have he says i could not do it because i was a different man back then i was hungry for success well it's such an ex- like for it being a i don't know i don't know how they shot all the driving scenes but it looks like they go a long distance mm. like i don't know like i think it looks like they just shot it all on, on an empty road 
which is uh, but you know, it's tense. Um, yeah. Okay, and and likewise for any of our listeners, you can it's the full movie is on YouTube, so you can just watch it there. And I think for any yes. any cinephile. Anyone who prides themselves on their movie knowledge, that's one you need to get under your belt. You calling me out, Bandit? You calling me out? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I just don't like slow movies because I, I've criticized yeah. Spectre and Sicario for being slow. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Well, Maybe I just need to take a nap before I see a movie nowadays <laughs> because apparently I'm not prepared for movies to be boring. So. Well, I first saw that when I was 15 and I saw it with all my other friends and we were all the same age, so... We seem to like it. I don't know. <laughs> Were you talking about Duel? Yes. Oh, well, no, no. I'm, I'm not criticizing Duel because Duel, Duel at least has tension. But I'm talking about Spectre oh, and right. Sicario. Yeah. Those are both slow movies that just come across as boring. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, do you want to get into the feature presentation? And now, our feature presentation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Bandit. Yes. Are you ready? Are you ready to talk not only the greatest Star Wars movies of all time, but one of the greatest movies of all time? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking The Empire Strikes Back. Woo! So, yeah, yes. baby. Oh. Woo! All right. So here's how this is going to work. I, I suggest maybe that we, we, we break down the film uh, and we talk about maybe some of our, our favorite moments from the film, and, and I'll I'll let you start off, Ben. And what are your thoughts on Empire Strikes Back? Well, first of all, in in rewatching this for the seven thousandth time, I think it must be, but it's <laughs> you know one thing I love about Empire Strikes Back is that like as a movie, there's not one, there's no scene or moment or anything in there that. Is waste is a waste of space. Like you could you could not cut out anything because everything is there for a reason. Well, there's the cave one, but whatever. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> there's the cave scene. There's that cave. Well, that's scene. him starting to use the force, and he needs to get injured because of to see the I vision mean, of Obi Wan. That's. I mean, there's I a guess. reason for it. Yeah, there is there is a reason for it. I'll give you the. I just think I just think it, it's it slows the movie down. And uh, and also that's just my the, the only nitpick you remember last time we did New Hope. I tried to view it with the modern day critical eye and come up with all the plot holes. Um, I didn't yeah. find any for this one, except one, which is that moment in the cave where what's what's the name of that monster that kills his? Uh, oh, uh, the Wampa. No, is uh, it the Wampa? The ton- the, is the Wampa the big one? Yeah, the Tonton is the thing he rides. Maybe it is yeah, the Wampa. Yeah, so it's, my, it's the, the Wampa. Right, even the if it's Wampa. not, forgive us, guys. We'll just call it a Wampa. Yeah, like mm-hmm. what he what he he reaches and he grabs the lightsaber. He cuts himself out of the ice. The Wampa comes at him. He cuts off its arm and runs out into the the snow and then almost freezes to death. He should mm-hmm. have just killed the Wampa with his lightsaber and stayed in the cave. <laughs> yes. He's got shelter. <laughs> yes, that that's okay. Right <laughs> Yes, but and apart from that, have, and they, there's nothing. Yes, there's no other have had an exhaust but... port on the on the. Mm. Yeah. Okay. But that's <laughs> hey, like if that's the only plot hole in the movie, then it's streets above, like pretty much every other movie. So <laughs> exactly. So you know, so what? Maybe what? What? What's some of your favorite moments from uh, from Empire Strikes Back? Um, my favorite moment is um, I like the bit just after. Is it just before or just after? It's just before Han gets frozen in the carbonite and Chewie's going nuts and throwing everyone around. Oh, and yes. Han Solo's like, no, <laughs> Chewie, stop. <laughs> yeah, he goes, stop, this won't help the... me. But oh. there's a great bit where um, Leia turns and looks at Vader mm-hmm. and there's a connection made between the two of them where, like, he looks at her, she looks at him, and then he, she kind of gets a weird look on her face and she steps steps back and sort of goes over to the others and then the next thing, like a few seconds later, Vader says to, um, like, after the freezing thing is done, he says to Cal Rizion, put her, her and the Wookiee on my ship. I'm taking them with me. And that's yeah. because you read the subtext. She's a Force user. He sensed something in her in that moment that he hadn't sensed before. So on the spot, he decided, okay, she's coming with me because I want to find out what that is. Yeah, yeah. And that's all, none that's of it's nice. ever said. It's just in that look. And like, see, stuff like that is why I love this movie so much. <laughs> well, even like, even like, right when Han Solo goes in, and then just cuts to Vader's face coming out of that smoke, and you're just like, that is a villain. 
Mm. That they can't. The empire has struck and back. I think I don't think that's a word. Has struck back. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, I think my favorite moment of the whole film. Um, it, it's definitely it, it's 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 uh, right before Yoda lifts the X wing out of the yeah out of the out of the swamp. It's the it's the speech he gives to Luke. You know, and he's like, "Ruinous beings we are. That's just crude matter." You know, and then he's and you know it's and he how good. he's talking about how. Thank you. And he's talking about how the force is is not the force isn't just this this weapon that we use. It's 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 this thing that binds the gal like Obi Wan said. It binds the galaxy together. And how he he's like between you, me, the trees, the rock, yes, even between land <laughs> and ship, you know. And and yeah. and then and then Luke's just like you want the impossible, you know. He's still that whiny Luke. He's still the Luke that's like, well, I'm supposed to go get some power some touch station, whatever. And you know, he's still that farmer boy kind of. And mm. excuse me. And then Yoda's just like and lifts it out of the, out of the swamp. And then Luke realizes kind of what the power of the Force can be. And Yoda gives a look of just like, kind of like the same look Akbar gives at the end of Return of the Jedi, where he's just like, oh, or he just kind of wants to sit back and it's like, that's the last thing I'll ever do. You know, that's the last big thing. And that's just mm. my, it's, I think it's the perfect scene in any movie ever. It's right up there for me with the, with the, the, the party scene from Dark Knight where Joker goes to the party. Yeah. Um, just because it's so, everything about the scene works and it just, ah, why i love that movie yeah yeah Ah, and i I like it as well the whole thing of that like uh that he's trying to sort of teach luke because luke like has that mental block of that Mm -hmm. i can't do that i can't take that out of the swamp so he's saying like you know lifting it's not the issue it's that you have that mental block that you don't think you can is why you can't do it where he says like i don't believe it and he says that is why you fail that's why you fail but that's that's a very true lesson as well because like you know with uh Mm -hmm. like in athletics they uh like a lot of coaches they say you need to visualize how you're going to win because by visualizing but beforehand it makes it a lot easier for you to do it like i remember hearing a story about a, a pole vaulter and he was like one of the Mm -hmm. best ones and he was training for the olympics but he could not get above a certain height no matter what they did, and they tried everything. So the coach said, you know, at this time every day, I want you to just do mental practice and just imagine yourself pole voting and you go over it. And he did that for like three months, and then he finally did it in real life. But he could not jump that height until he had overcome that mental block to do it. Exactly. So even, even though that's like talking about the force in the movie, that lesson is still kind of true. It's like if we believe we do something yeah. often... The, if we fail this trip at the finish line, it's because we have a mental block, you know. Yeah, and I, I think I think the whole thing with Yoda, um, I think the why the why he stands out as a Star Wars character. Not even let's looking at the prequels because he wouldn't be in the prequels if he wasn't so beloved from from uh, Empire Strikes Back. You know, like when we first meet him, he's this hermit kind of character, this this jokey kind of old man. And and you know, if you had never seen the movie before yeah. and not know what Yoda was. You don't know that that's Yoda, yeah. and then like when he's sitting in, in his, when they're in his hut, and then he just turns, he's just like, "I cannot train him. I can't do this. The boy is not ready." Yeah, and then you're just like, and then you know Obi Wan comes back, and he's like, "Well, I did different when you trained me." And, it's, uh, and he's like, too, "Too old. The boy's too old." And I'm just like, "Oh, you know, everything about that character is such a." You, you can tell the, that the moment he sees Luke, he figures out, you know, how how he's going to test him, how he wants to train him, and I just. Yeah. Well, I like that yeah. as well. Like, that's the cool thing about Yoda is like, when you first see him, like when I was a kid, I didn't understand why Yoda was acting like such an idiot when he first met him, even though he's not. Yeah. But like, um, yeah, then as I got a bit older, I understood. I was like, oh, he was acting like that to test Luke's character and see what kind yeah. of person he is. Test his patience. Yeah. Because yeah. like in, I think, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman's character in Mission Impossible 3, he had a line where he said, you can always tell some... You can always tell someone's character by how they treat someone they don't have to treat well. Yeah, so it's, it's, yeah, that's a good, yeah. It's kind of yeah. like that, yeah, because like with Yoda acting like that, you don't know he's this powerful Jedi. You don't have to treat him well. You could just kick him in the yes. face. But he got yeah. to see that Luke was still kind-hearted. And he was just yeah. he was annoyed that he's wrecking his camp, but he's putting up with it. That's, yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, he's throwing everything around. He's just like, he's like, yeah, he's like no, it's mine. And then R.T. Like, tries to grab it from him. <laughs> um, you know, and he's hitting him up with the silver stick. Yeah. Um, I got Okay, is this the best Han Solo? Is it in Empire Yeah, Strikes I think Back? so. I think it is. You think so? Because yeah. 
yeah, because he's good in he's good in Return of the Jedi, but by then eh, he he lost a bit of that. Harrison edge. Ford Harrison Ford didn't want to do it anymore, so he was phoning it out. Oh yeah, yeah, but, but also I think the character he was a little bit more pee whipped mm-hmm. at that point. You know what I mean? And that's his arc. Yeah, I get I it. You. He's a selfish jerk in the first movie. By the time you get to Return of the Jedi, he's more noble. He's fighting for a cause he believes in. Exactly. But, you know, I, I'll uh, always. I think, he's, I think he, he's at that balance in Empire that I, I like. Yeah. You know, whenever she calls him a nerf herd, he gives that look of just like, who's scruffy looking? I'm just like, ah, <laughs> ah, ah, Han Solo. You know, um, and I think that I think by the time we we reach the end of of Empire Strikes Back, it's it's funny how we how we learn to care. Uh, so much about this this scoundrel that you know was kind of a kind of a douche in that first movie. Yeah. You know, and now when he's when he's in when he's in that carbonite scene and 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 Leia's like I love you and Han's like like I know I'm just like ah Han Solo and, and then <laughs> yeah. he goes in there. See, I'd, and, I'd take oh. the Han who says I know over the Han Solo in Return of the Jedi who says I love you to Leia and then she says I know. Exactly. I'd, I'd rather have the one in <laughs> Empire <laughs> who doesn't yes. say I love you back. So that's, that's okay, <laughs> so do we? Is this the best lightsaber fight uh, between Luke and Vader in Empire? Ooh, I I think it is. You think it's, so? It's certainly, when Vader is the most menacing, and the and the yes, thing I love about true. it is it's got stages to it. Mm-hmm. Because I suppose kind of in the same way that Yoda was sort of testing Luke when he first met him to see what he's like, Vader's kind of doing a similar thing. Like yeah. during when they first meet and they're having the fight in the room. Um, Vader's not even holding his lightsaber with both hands. He's he's all no. he's all defensive because he wants to see what Luke's got, and yes. then they like fall through a thing or whatever, and it goes into the next time, and then Vader's attacking him with the Force, throwing all the things at him, and he gets sucked out and crawls his way back in, and then the third time, Vader just comes out and he's just going for him. It's like a pressure. Yeah, it, it's, a pressure after, uh, it's after he, he, he gets his arm. Like, he, he, he gets a nick at his arm, and they're just like, and, like, swipes it up. Oh, no, thing. even before that, that though. Even over. before that, because yeah. remember, he's he's in the tunnel, and Vader jumps out from a shadow, and he's just like, and he's swinging oh, wildly, true. and he's yeah. hitting the walls, and yeah, so he's yeah. just putting him under pressure to see what he's got. Yeah, and then he clips think, him in I the think, shoulder. I think Vader's, I think some of Vader's best lines are in that, are in that fight. Like, whenever he falls in the hole, and they're just like, all too easy, and then like whenever he knocks, he knocks Luke's o- Luke over, and then he just floats down the stairs. Like it's just little moments like that make me go, "Oh, that's so cool." Vader's so cool, yeah. You know, and then um, I I don't know, if, I don't know if it's my favorite lightsaber fight, just because uh, music for me, like a score, really can help uh, exuberate a scene for me, and yeah. so I think that's why I love as much as I hate the prequels. I love me that Darth Maul fight between uh, Qui Gon and with Qui Gon. That's and a great fight. That really is. Yeah, like just like it's it, a great it fight in a terrible and movie. <laughs> yes. If you erase the rest uh, of the, the movie, yeah. that fight is fantastic. So I think that's my favorite Star Wars fight. People, people a lot of people will go the Obi Wan and Anakin fight, but I think it goes on for five minutes yeah. too long. I, I never um, really liked so. that. Even yeah, though the, I, I thought, it's a Fast and yeah. Furious fight, I was like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I just I, <laughs> Fast and Furious. Uh, I thought it was cool when they were trying to force each other, you know. Um, but that yeah. but that prequel fight when, yeah, that prequel fight when that when those doors open and, and the score kicks in, it's like Toya, my Toya, and you see the double blade lightsaber, yeah. And then they're just like doo doosh. I'm like, oh, it's on. Um, uh, what was and I, I think say? like oh yeah, I guess that's better because like with with the fight between like Anakin and Obi Wan, you know they're both going to survive, but at least yeah. with. With Phantom Menace, there's two guys there who you don't know if one of them is going to die or both of them are going to die. So there's a bit of tension there. Yes. You know? And same in Empire Strikes Back. Nobody knew what was going to happen. You probably have a exactly. pretty good idea that Luke's not going to die, but he lost yeah. his hand. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that was good too. You know, and you could and whenever you go back and rewatch that scene, you could feel it coming. You know, you're just like, ah, uh, oh, okay, get away from that, and then he loses it, yeah. and the saber falls with the hand and. Oh my God! And then you know, Obi Wan never told you what happened to your father, and he's like, "He told me enough. He told me you <laughs> killed him. No, I am your father." And just, just the moment of like, all and like you can you, like even the music kind of goes, "WTF? This just happened. Oh my God!" Like you can kind of hear the re- the reactions like to the music is just like, "Oh my God!" You know. Um, yeah. yeah, and uh, that, what, what a great twist, that movie. Mm. 
oh, Obi Wan. <laughs> Luke is Vader, or uh, Luke is Vader's son. You know. Yeah. Where, how, did you did you know that twist going into the movie when you first saw it? No, no. Oh, I, mean, I can't remember my out. reaction when I first saw it, but yeah. <laughs> were, 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 were you just like, yeah, I guess. I mean, yeah. Oh, I, can't, yeah. I can't really remember. Because there, because there, there are YouTube videos of kids finding that out today. And there's one, there's one where the kid's just like, nah, nah, daddy's lying. Nah, nah, nah. nah. <laughs> I think like, I've seen that, so yeah. Like, yeah, and he just like walks out, he's like, nah, dad, nah, nah, it's not true. <laughs> and, and like there's one where this like this three-year-old girl just goes, <gasps> like has her gaping wide mouth open and everyone's just like, and like all the comments <laughs> are just like, and, and thus a Star Wars fan was born. And, yeah, yeah. You know, it, like it was. You know, I, a, I do wonder like when I was watching, because, um, you know, in between A New Hope and filming this one, uh, Mark Hamill had that really bad car accident and he smashed his face. Yeah. And they had to like yeah. actually rebuild his face. So, yeah. but I, it actually made me wonder because that bit, the bit of the start where the Wampa sort of claws him in the face and he comes back and then he's sort of recovering in the weird tube of water and they all come in, they're like, how are you feeling, kid? I actually wondered because I thought that's probably pretty similar like to what thing. happened after his car accident people coming in how are you feeling you know oh, okay so i thought oh, i wonder yeah. if partly that was partly inspired by you know what he went through in his life because <laughs> his face is kind of scarred up at that yeah and, and we've talked about this in the past but how lucky is mark hamill to play luke skywalker get injured and have to and get to play him again for two more movies and then get to play joker yeah. and then get to come back as luke skywalker <laughs> And we still haven't seen him in the new movie yet, so... Well, except in that uh, leaked picture where he's wearing all those white robes. Yeah, but, I mean, that's one still, you know. Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure he's not even going to look a lot like... I'm pretty sure he's going to have the black robe, uh, something similar to what he had on in Jedi. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, let me ask yeah, you, just but, sort of going a little bit into Force Awakens territory again. Please, please. You know, some are saying, like, Luke will be the Obi-Wan type character. Others saying maybe Luke is going to turn evil. Which which do you reckon you'd enjoy more as a Star Wars fan? Because I'd like to see well, evil Luke. <laughs> well, for starters, I think Han Solo is going to be the Obi-Wan of this movie. You know, oh, kind of right. introduce these characters into the world and then have them get killed off at the, towards so, the end. Yeah, he is already filling yeah. that role, isn't he? And you kind of, yeah, and you see it in the trailers. You know, he's he's on the adventure with them. Um, uh, you know, he's going to talk to Maz Kanata and all that. But I think Luke, I think Luke is going to be, I don't want him to be evil because mm. that kind of negates the, that kind of negates the point of Return of the Jedi. Yeah. You know, the whole, the whole point, because, you know, because that was going to be the original ending for Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Luke was going to take Vader's helmet and put it on and be like, now I'm in Darth Vader. That's why he had on black the entire movie mm. because it was kind of meant to foreshadow that. But he, at the end, they changed it. Uh, uh, I think Lucas did it to sell more toys, but at the end, you know, they changed it and it's revealed he has on white underneath. <laughs> have, have you seen you know, the, so. the How It Should Have Ended where he cuts off Luke's Luke's hand? He's like, I am your father. We'll rule the galaxy as father and son. And he's yes. like, actually, that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm like, that's probably sweet. what I would have said. I'd be like, yeah, let's sweet. do that. <laughs> and then like, but, and then he jumps off and then Vader picks up. He's like, where are you going? Yeah, he and catches like, him he with the force. Like, and I was like, yeah, he's like, he's he's like, like totally I'm your father. He's like, no, nah, I'm your father, and we're going home. Like, like, what do you think incredible. you're going? That's, that's incredible. Um, yeah, and so, again, and then Return of the Jedi, when he finds out he has a daughter, he's like, sister, I have a daughter too? He goes off and tells the whole, the whole world. You he's know what he's like <laughs> when he's like this. He gets like this, you know. Yeah, but I, I think I think to have an evil Luke would be kind of pointless because mm. we already have so many big, so many baddies in this one. You know, we've got to, you know, to... We we got uh, Phasma, Kylo Ren, Snoke, possibly you know, probably Plagueis. You yeah. Know? So I mean, so if if well, you're gonna want to go evil, Luke. I, I am thinking though, because like, uh, you know, there's also rumors that maybe Luke is in some kind of exile at the beginning of this, and that's why we don't see him. But I thought about it, and I thought that's yeah. true. Like Obi Wan had a good reason to be in exile in A New Hope. He's being hunted by the Empire. Luke yeah. had a Rebel Alliance around him. I don't see why he would need yes. to go into exile unless. He feels yeah. himself being tempted by the dark side, so he puts a self-imposed exile to avoid him becoming a Vader. I had a theory back, like back, back in like last November when that first teaser came out. Mm. Uh, I had a theory about what happened to Luke, um, and who, because at that point we had no idea who anyone was. Um, we still thought that was Tatooine. We saw in the trailer. Um, so back mm. then, we didn't know what Kylo Ren was. Like, like the the trading cards came out with all the names on it. Like back in January. So we, I, I, I didn't know. All I thought, I'm like, oh, that's Adam Driver in the hood with that cross lightsaber. Mm. And so I, we, I was just spitballing theories. I'm like, what if you know Luke attempted to start up a new Jedi Order? He started to, he attempted to start up something else. 
you know, and but things went bad, you know, so he had this uh, this kid uh, kind of maybe it was Han Solo's son and he was training him. And then maybe uh, that uh, that kid, I guess, Kylo Ren got tempted by the dark side. Yeah. And so Luke had Luke had to take him down. But Luke said in order to keep this from happening, you know, he said, I've caused too much danger. You know, I, I, I've had to wound this guy, you know, and so maybe now I'm going to exile myself, mm. you know, so. I'm thinking that might be what's going on here. I, be, Luke's yeah. definitely in exile. He's definitely not just chilling yeah. around, you know, in the area. He's he's pulled a Yoda because you see it in the trailer. At least I think you see it in the trailer. The second one with the R two D two, yeah, which is still my favorite shot of the trailer. Well, maybe maybe he's just thinking that the universe might be better off if there aren't force users. Which yeah, would that might be kind of be true. <laughs> Probably yeah, would be yeah, better off. Might, yeah. Maybe he's just at the end of Return because you see that in kind of in his face. Of Return of the Jedi, like he has that look of like it's over, but it's not over. When he's looking yeah. at Vader's body as it's burning, he goes got kind of look of like there's something else I have to do. So maybe maybe that's him running off and being like, you know what, I'm out, and he just kind of pieces. <laughs> uh, and then the Force awakens in in uh, John Boyega, and so he has to step out of retirement, which is yeah, <sighs> 39 days. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, 30, yeah. 38 days for you, I guess. You know, you're a day ahead of me. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's yeah. at at the beginning of the movie, there was this bit that I I went and googled because I was like, I'm sure that you know, with all the EU, someone's done that. But there's a bit at the beginning where Leia says to Han, like, "Where are you going? I thought you decided to stay." And he says, "Well, yeah. the bounty hunter we ran into in Ord Mandel changed my mind." So I thought, I wonder what that was about. So I went and googled it, the bounty ah, hunter at right. Ord Mandel, and yes, of course, there's a, a comic. One, there was a comic oh, no. made about it, <laughs> and it was interesting to read. It was a bounty hunter called Score. S K O R R, and apparently Score captured both Luke and Leia as a way to lure in Han Solo. So it's kind of weird that this bounty hunter could capture Luke and Leia, but not Han, because Han eventually yeah. freed them all. But it's like, yeah, if you can capture Luke, you could probably capture Han pretty easily. But yeah. this guy well, eventually, I, well, I, I guess, at this point, at this point, you know, Luke is kind of he's this is this between Episode Four and Five. Uh, yeah. Uh, the comic. Well, yeah, because at that point, Luke isn't, like, super Jedi yet. You know, he's still... Yeah, I suppose he, he's a better. Yeah. He's a better pilot than But still, Leia's Jedi the point. princess. She's the head of the Riz. Yes. <laughs> it'd be much yeah, harder getting her than it would be getting her. But anyway, eventually yeah. he got captured by the Imperials, and he was sent to the Spice Mines of Kessel. Smashed into who knows what. Oh, my. <laughs> Remember would you say, would you say he? Would you say he did a Kessel run in less than 12 parts? <laughs> There's a great that's a that's a great Family Guy joke where yeah. um, he where he talks to like where like this like it shows these girls in the car and like you see the money Falcon pull up on the side of the street and he's like guys are you guys up for a Kessel run and then the girls like oh we only have twelve parts sex he's like I think there will be plenty of time we'll be fine and, you know I wonder if because the spice mines of Kessel they're basically supposed to be like just like a forced labor camp for prisoners and you go there and you yeah. you're mining but it's pretty much a death sentence because hardly anyone makes it out of their life. So the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs, maybe he was freeing prisoners or something? I wonder if that's or what maybe, maybe, about. maybe maybe when you get down to the... I don't know a lot about the spice mines of Kessel, but maybe when you get down there, those like maybe it's like you have to... Like the Kessel run is you have to mine all of this and Han Solo maybe mined all of that in less than 12 parsecs. Yeah. So, you know, maybe less than like, I don't know, 12 I, days. I don't day think so though, because he, he uses that line to describe how fast his ship is. So if it was just him running... It's kind That's of a weird true. thing to say. <laughs> That's true. Never mind. All right, theory, theory, theory closed. I can play it. Oh, man. That, that's my Star Wars knowledge just, just crumbling at my feet. Hashtag oh, man. Star Wars jacket speculation. There we go. <laughs> hashtag, hashtag Star Wars jacket speculation. Yeah. Yes, Chris um, Stuckman, <laughs> we know that you hate speculation, but we love it, so we're going to keep speculating. <laughs> yeah. And, and have, you, have, you heard, have you heard about the Screen Junkies, uh, what they're doing now with their whole network thing? No. What are they doing? But they're doing like a screen junkie kind of Netflix thing where you get all this extra content, uh, like like new shows and whatnot, mm-hmm. uh, for like five dollars uh, a month or something like that. Okay. Um, but they're letting everyone get the first three months free, uh, which is cool because this is going to be a, a very much a test thingy. But it looks kind of cool. Um, that's just a random thought. It's I just had weird they're brain. doing that because YouTube Red is coming in, which is basically the same exactly. thing. Exactly. So and I'm like, are, is, are they are they tying this in with their YouTube yeah, red thing? Or, maybe they have a special deal with 
with well, YouTube or something? They're is, big enough. Screen Doggies is owned by a company, you know, owned by Defy Media, which is actual corporation. Yeah, yeah. Um, so by the way, you, you know, 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 YouTube Red actually works out better for us smaller channels because I think Does it? I think they divide because if someone's paying uh, six months a month, uh, six dollars a month or whatever, but then they watch yeah. tons of your videos, you get like a percentage cut of that six dollars based off how much they watch of your stuff as opposed to others. I think that's how oh, it works, boy. which means we could get a oh, lot boy. more money, which is great. <laughs> a whole point forty five cents. Yeah. That's awesome. That's why I said you should start <laughs> uploading the podcast things on your channel once the couple. Well we can't please. do it we can't do it till January because I have the red strike. So I know. I that's know. what's gonna happen. So that's why it's on my for the time being. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but we'll move it over eventually. Uh, and hopefully get more views. I'll, I'll definitely so, keep it on uh, screen junkies. I don't want do you have anything else to think of? I can't believe I'm running out of things to say on Empire Strikes oh, don't worry, Back. I, I, feel, I feel like I'm missing. I got tons. <laughs> Uh, all the rebels are American, while all the Imperials are British. Oh, okay. That was a deliberate subtle, subtle choice rev- from the director. Revolutionary War kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. The director did yeah. that on purpose. No Australians, though, huh? <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, I, I think it was only Owen Lars in the prequels who was an Aussie. Oh, that's right. That's yeah, he's right. He's the he one Aussie, Aussie in the galaxy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and they, and they got him to be Owen Lars. How, what a... What a what a nothing kind of role. It gets to be Uncle Owen. To be fair, he is the last thing we see in the prequels, which is cool. Oh, yeah, yeah that's true. He's, yeah. yeah. He's the last thing we see of episode three, which is my opinion. I think I think that's one of the best moments in all of Star Wars is the ending to Revenge of the Sith. Because it's, it's because it's the it's the perfect <laughs> bridge to the to I think um, to the, the original trilogy. Perfect bridge? No, I, I wouldn't say that. No. <laughs> Not the movie, <laughs> not the movie, the ending. Yeah, yeah. Not the movie. Like, like you know, when Obi-Wan goes and gives Leia and Luke to their respective families, mm. it's a be- – it's, 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 I don't want to say it's subtle, but it's not like usual George Lucas in your face, a bunch of CGI nonsense. You know, even though Tatooine still looks like it's a green screen, yeah. it's – I think it's – it's still, I think, it's such a beautiful moment. And the John Williams score, as always, is incredible. <laughs> so, you know, I think it's a beautiful moment yeah, of the yeah. Star Wars saga. So don't judge me, Ben. No, no, I judge. <laughs> you know, particularly when, when the John Williams music is at its finest, I think, is during the sequence in the asteroid belt. That whole sequence mm, yeah. in the asteroid field is... It is just perfect. <laughs> the music, the yeah, motions, see, the yeah. effects, everything just like... It's like poetry. It rhymes. Yeah. See, I'm, and and that's a, that 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 is a great scene where uh, they they discover that they're in the. Uh, does that worm have a have a name? I can't remember. Let's call it the space uh, sarlacc because it basically is okay, a space yeah. sarlacc. When they find out, they find out they're in the space, they're in the the space sarlacc, and yeah. uh, and you know, and, and you see the teeth, and you're like, oh my god, they're in a cave, and then they get I, out. I did realize well. watching this though that. Being eaten by monsters is a common thing in Star Wars, isn't it? Whether it's the Wamper at the beginning of Empire Strikes Back, whether it's the Space Sarlacc or the Sarlacc or the thing in the garbage compactor in the first movie, there's always monsters, yeah. isn't there? Or the Rancor. It's the Rancor. Or the right? Rancor. The yeah, Palace. that's another one. Yeah, the Rancor. I, I need yeah. to yeah. find a place to put a giant monster in my next <laughs> Star Wars fan fiction. <laughs> I don't know where. I'll try to stick one in somewhere. <laughs> if The Force Awakens sucks, I expect... A what should have been. The Force <laughs> what it should have been, yeah. You realize that, right? If the Force Awakens sucks, they're going to turn to you. Why not? To, for what it should have Why been. Why not, indeed? I'm more than happy. <laughs> yeah. But one, one of the other things <laughs> I liked about Empire Strikes Back is there's like there's this kind of subplot going on of the infighting between the Imperial officers and kind of the chain of command because they keep getting strangled oh, yeah. by Vader. Yeah, they, they keep. Yeah. They, there's a great scene. There's a great scene whenever he realizes that he's messed up and he does like this look of like, I'll. Um, I'll go tell Vader. Like, because he knows it's over. Yeah. He's just like, I'll go, I'll go tell Vader. Well, there's, Vader. there's like, three Vader. of them, and you see them all together yeah. at the beginning. And there's there's Admiral Ussel, and then there's mm. General Pierre, and then there's, yeah. no, or is it Nida? No, it's, then it's General, General Nida, and then it's Captain, uh, British guy. Yeah, hang on, I've got him written down. No, Captain Pierre, <laughs> then Captain Nida. So, <laughs> the guy on the top gets he first gets strangled over the radio and then the next guy moves up and he's like you see the conversation he's like you failed me for the last time admiral and he starts choking him then he's like uh, general piat and he steps forward and he's like yes he's like nothing will stop us this time and the guy goes oh and collapses and he goes admiral (laughs) piat 
<laughs> so in the space of that sentence where the guy dies, he changes from captain to admiral. <laughs> that's um, that's 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 horrifying to yeah. me. There. And, and then and, that oh, guy gets strangled. But the last guy survives. Yeah, it, the last guy survives. We don't see him get strangled. So he's moved up oh, the so ranks by oh, the, everyone else above him being killed. <laughs> yeah, he won by default. So uh, <laughs> I I like whenever that guy walks in and we see like we briefly see the back of Vader's head. Yes. And uh, you know when he's at, when he's in that that weird clampy pod thing, and then Vader turns around and looks and just like yeah you saw it what of it yeah I'm, <laughs> I can still I can still destroy you yeah I'm I'm not weak yeah it, it's it kind of shows that he's he's in control of how he looks you know of what of what he became you know this weird egg thing um, all right what else you got I got um, <laughs> there's a bit in the asteroid belt where um, it shows the ship sort of going and they're blasting all the asteroids. And then it cuts yeah. to inside, and there's Vader talking to a couple of holograms of the captains on the different ships. Right before it cuts, um, they're shooting all the asteroids, and one asteroid comes and hits the bridge of a destroyer. So then when it cuts inside, there's three guys holograms, and the hologram on the far left vanishes because he was in the, the bridge that got hit by the asteroid. <laughs> if you watch oh, it closely, okay. he's right over on the far left, but it just goes, <laughs> cuts inside, and you just see the hologram. He kind of throws his arms up and goes, ah, and he just vanishes. <laughs> <laughs> like a guy gets wiped out in the middle of the conversation. Man, these guys, these guys are the, these guys are the real <laughs> Think about it. Yeah. These guys are the red shirts of Star Wars. Like. <laughs> but it's so funny when, when you know hands. to watch it. These it's guys so great. in right arms are the, are, the, <laughs> are the red shirts of Star Wars. I think also there's... <laughs> in watching that, I saw... There's that, that scene that's been redone three, four times in the different special editions where, mm-hmm. where we see the Emperor for the first time and he's yeah, a giant yeah, hologram yeah, yeah. head. And they've redone that so many times. But, mm-hmm. you know, they keep changing the dialogue to try to make it fit better with the prequels, but it still doesn't fit with the prequels. Because he says, I think the final version, um, he says the son of Skywalker must not become a Jedi, basically. And there's the whole thing yeah. of how is that possible? And he's like, search your feelings, da 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 da. You know, I think it'd be work. Like, the only way they could reword that so that it worked well is if the Emperor can't yet foresee that that is luke skywalker he should just say we've got a new enemy the young rebel who destroyed the death star go yeah. get him and vader's the only one who knows he's a skywalker yet so he then he's the one who's like if he could be turned he'd be a powerful jedi that's yeah. the only way that conversation could make sense if get rid of the bit that says the son of skywalker must not become a jedi just say he must not become a jedi the force is strong with him yeah, I mean, it, it's. I think you know. And then you assume after to me, that he it's finds such out a. Luke. I think to me, it's such a minor thing, because it it, it all basically says the same thing. I know it is, go but that's the thing. Go that's the thing, Luke. Lucas. If you're going to go back and fix things, actually fix them, okay? This yeah. isn't fixing. Like Boba Fett's, like Boba Fett's voice. <laughs> yes. Like like, like it's a suddenly terrible making voice. him. Uh, an Aussie. No offense to to the Aussies, but they suddenly made him yeah. uh, Australian. Well, he's, he's New Zealand. He's a fan. guy. Uh, or New Zealand, excuse me, part of my French, New Zealand, <laughs> and and I'm not a fan because the original, you know, he's a regular guy, as you wish, you know, and then the Australian or the New Zealand guy, like, as you wish, I'm like, oh, that's that's different, and then and then you know, what's worse is that they've kept it canon because in Battlefront, in the trailer, when you hear him talk, he sounds like the guy from the prequels. Yeah. So now Boba Fett is going to be forever have to be that guy <laughs> because even in the new canon, he's still that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of Boba Fett, like when, when yes. Luke goes in to uh, try and rescue Han and Leia, there's yeah, a bit where he's, yeah. when he's sneaking around at the beginning and like you see Boba Fett walk past with the floating Han Solo and it's like, we know that's Han Solo in the Carbonite, but Luke doesn't know. Yeah. Wow. So we have to watch as they just walk past and he just lets them go. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, no, Luke, that's him. <laughs> he's over oh, there. Kinda, Get him. I think mean, you could have saved us an entire movie, like. You know. <laughs> but I like that that yeah. he was so close and he didn't realize it. You know. <laughs> what a great scene, by the way. Whenever the doors open and and Darth Vader's at that dinner, oh yeah. my god! And and Han, Han right away, George Lucas, Han shoots right away. He shoots first. Like, you know what? Like, shoot. He doesn't hesitate. And then that's they're what just like, do, 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 do. force. 
Yeah, I'd be hope you'd be glad to join us, you know. And then I like how Robot Chicken had that sketch about uh, them all sitting at that, at that yeah. dinner. What do um, they talk about? <laughs> yeah, um, and they're just, it's just like, have you seen that? No, no. But, um, oh, no, uh, I mean, yes, I've yeah. seen that. But if yeah. there was a scene that's showing what they've said, no, I haven't. <laughs> No, 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 no. It's just, uh, it's like uh, in the, it's a parody, and and it's basically them sitting at the dinner, and you know, Han Solo and Boba Fett making faces at each other, flipping each other off, and and <laughs> and then Vader's like, "Did you have, did you ever have a nice dinner like this?" And Leia's like, "Yeah, I did on Alderaan." And then Vader's like, "Princess, let it go," you know. And it's it's good. It's it's mm. funny. Um, oh, also, and also Lando. with yeah. Boba Fett yeah, again. Go uh, going back to that guy Score, who was the bounty hunter from Ord Mandel. Apparently there was also yeah. another sc- story where he did capture Han and he was ready to hand him over to Boba Fett. But by then he would had like this real heated rivalry with Han Solo. So when he found out that Boba Fett had orders to take him alive to Jabba, he like reneged and didn't want to hand him over because he wanted to kill Solo. So that's sort yeah. of how he ended up losing him then. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, he got cocky. He got cocky. Yeah. Great kid, don't get cocky. Because um, Han Solo Lando, and Boba Fett yeah. do know each other. Because like even yes. even without all the expanded universe stuff, at the end of like in Return of the Jedi, when uh, he goes into the Salak, it's because Chewie growls to Han Solo and he goes, "Boba Fett, where?" And yeah, he turns and, around yeah, and he's hits like, "Because because he knows he's he knows like, who like, Boba, Boba Fett Boba is." Fett. Yeah. Boba Fett. He's like, "What's he doing here?" <laughs> uh, so so uh, do you do you do you believe my theory of how Boba Fett was the one that killed on Uncle Owen and Operu? I like that. Yeah, on, yeah. Uh, you t- mentioned that before. Yeah, and I remember yeah, at first when I'm you told online. me, I was like, "No, it's just the stormtroopers," you know. But yeah. then when we talked I'm like, about the stormtroopers, it, stormtroopers they're not that brutal. Yeah, because yeah, like there is a bit like we won't go over it all again. But yeah, like in Star Wars: A New Hope, like there is still a sense that the the Empire is trying to present itself as being more legitimate. Still, it's not yes. full Nazi yet. <laughs> it's not no. full space Nazi yet. So there's that whole no. conversation in the in the group where they're like. Um, you can't dissolve the Imperial Senate. How can we maintain control? So they're still trying to appear. So basically we said, yeah. maybe the Stormtroopers wouldn't have burned them alive, but they'd outsource that work to other people, which would be Boba Fett. What? Because he was on Tatooine at the time. Yeah. And I think That's that, why that, Vader. that comes from... Yeah, in, in this movie, when he's, he's talking to him, he's just like, no disintegration. So I'm like, ah, ha, ha. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> he did it to yeah. Uncle Owen and Alperu. Yeah. Which is... A brutal scene, but that's a new hope. Um, Lando, <laughs> I think I, I whenever whenever I, I think of like a smooth character movie, I always go, "Hey, baby, Billy D. Williams, Lando." <laughs> Hello, hey, what you know, I love, we here? I, yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'm not intruding on anything. Like I love, I love me some Billy D. Williams. He's, I think he's he's a great. I'm glad they added another black guy to Star Wars. Yeah, um, it's it's nice. I don't want Finn to be Lando's son. Uh, John Boyega's character. I don't want him to be Lando's son because that really does make the universe smaller. Yeah, um, yeah. Not everyone yeah. needs to be related. Precisely, <laughs> except Ray. Except Ray, who needs to be a Skywalker. Yes, because or a Solo. But either uh, way, <laughs> part of the no. She family. needs to be a Skywalker. Yeah, but she could be like I don't want Han Solo Princess Leia's kids. So this technically, a she's a Solo, this, but she's this, still four cents. I know, I know. I mean, I know that, but I want her to be Luke's kid because I think that that really. I think I like the parallels. Yeah, I'd actually like it of, if Kylo uh, is Luke's son. Maybe he had another wife that we never saw or whatever. Ooh, ooh. I'd like that. That'd be good. I'd like it if Kylo was Jar Jar Binks. That's still a rumor <laughs> going around that Kylo Ren is Jar Jar Binks. Uh, <laughs> like, like he pops off the helmet and he's just like, Misa gonna revenge you, Annie. And he's talking in a Darth Vader helmet. You know, that's, that's, that's still a thing going around. <laughs> if that happens if that happens i'm walking out i i promise i, I will actually I'm walk out, out unless it's like a dream I'm, sequence I'll, i'm gonna give myself <laughs> yeah i'm gonna give myself five minutes to 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 rest after that i'm gonna go step out and just be like <sighs> <sighs> santi i need my money back theaters i need my money back uh, imax that, I, want my, I want my money back <laughs> that's like even if it's like the last five minutes and to think movie. that george lucas thought he was the funniest character because you know there's that infamous clip Jar Jar's a key to all this because he's the funniest the character we've ever had. No, Han Solo is the funniest character yeah. you've ever had. There's there's a uh, bit in there's a bit in this. It's just a uh, made of leak. Uh, how are you? That's uh, that's still one of the best lines of that movie, uh, New Hope, when he's talking to the, you know, he's oh like, yeah, oh yeah, everything's yeah. fine, everything's fine, good good down here. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the bit in in this with Empire Strikes Back where um, 
yeah. C-3PO is like, I don't know where your ship learned to communicate. It has the most mysterious dialect. And he's like, you have to replace <laughs> the negative power conflict. And he's like, well, of course I'll have to replace it. I know that. And he turns around to like Han Solo when he's out of, when C-3PO is out of earshot. And he's like, I think we need to replace the negative power cufflink. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's like good. that's Han Solo right there. <laughs> yeah, that's that. See, that's comedy, George. Yes, learn from you. Learn from your old film teacher. Yes, learn from Irving Kirshner. There you go. Come on. <laughs> um, I, well, I'm thinking of another. I'm trying to think of another. Oh, the ending. Just the ending. Like I think yeah. that might be another one of my all-time favorite. Like I think the Star Wars endings to movies always do, uh, for the most part, like to end strong. Uh, episodes one and two excluded. Yeah. Um, but that ending, you know, where you know we don't know what happens. Han's gone. You know, Lando's there wearing Han's clothes, and Chewie's there. You know, you know Luke's got the new hand. You know, he finds out Vader's his dad. He he has this new robotic hand. And now they're just standing off and looking off and wondering what's going to happen next. Mm. And it's the Han and Leia love theme playing, and it gets me all that... teary and mochi eyed every time. And it's it's lovely. And then it just ends. And you're just like, no, wait. I, I wonder. Oh, if, I can go um, see the next one. <laughs> I wonder if that ending might have actually been the first time we ever got like a cliffhanger in a movie before, because TV shows did that all the time. But um... well, I mean, oh, my, my first thought was the Batman serials back in the early days. Like, well, Batman get out of this one, you know, and then and then you you go you go back the next week, you know, like Batman will be hanging from a building or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, when it back Back to the Future was after this movie, right? Um, because that movie had a cliffhanger. Oh, I don't know. Back to, well, back to oh no, Back to the Future was what eighty five something like that eighty four yeah. whatever you know yeah, mid eighties. So, yeah. And Empire Strikes Back was nineteen eighty. My mistake. Okay. Well, um, well, regardless, the point I, the point is that ending that cliffhanger kind of ending. Since then, every yes. other movie has tried to end on a cliffhanger like that. Scorch some have trials. come close, <laughs> some not so close, yeah. like Scorch Trials. <laughs> yeah. But it, it does, that have ending seen, does... Have you seen Catching Fire? The Hunger Games Catching Fire? Um, no, because the movie's not out yet. No, Catching Fire, the second one. Oh, oh wait, wait that's right. Yeah, the second one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah Have I've you seen, seen that one? one? I think I think uh, I, we've talked about that in the past about how that I think is the best uh, young adult movie we've gotten, um, I, and I think that one does a, a fairly good job of of replicating that Empire Strikes Back formula Actually, of yeah. where you don't where you don't know anything that's happening, you don't know what's going on. It's the middle chapter. Things just got a lot darker. It's true, actually. You know, yeah. And then, you know, and then the next thing you know, it's like your home's destroyed. Credits. Like that's. I think that's a good use of that empire strikes back for me yeah you're right that yeah i'd say that'd yeah. probably be a good one too yeah but yeah, i, I so, wonder but, though but you're right i wonder though because as we i think we spoke about this last week but um yeah that ending because it does end with lando saying over the radio to luke and leia we're gonna go find han but remember that we talked yeah. about like what the main reason they brought in the character of Lando Calrissian was because they weren't sure if they could re-sign Harrison for the last one. So if they couldn't, Lando would just carry on in that role. So yeah. how were they going to sort out that ending of we'll go and find Han well, if I you think, can't get I think, Harrison? I think what they, well, I think they were going to say like they were going to like they were going to find him in Jabba's palace, un, uh, unfreeze him, and then have him just be a, like just be a skeleton or something. Wow, that's like, such like, a like, buzz just, like, kill. You know how they, <laughs> well, you like you, you like you know, you know how they said that. Uh, like how he may not survive the process. Like they were going to use it on Luke. They're like, we'll just do it on Skywalker for now because, yeah. or not Skywalker on Solo for now because they wanted to test it out. Mm. So, um, you know, I'm, you know, maybe it's unfreeze and have him be a skeleton or a dead body. Yeah. You know, but then you'd get prop. all the nerds like me saying they did say he was in perfect hibernation, and C three PO did say he'll be quite well protected. So yeah, I don't know how they would have got out of that one. <laughs> that would have been tough. I don't know. Point is, Harrison Ford came back because. He was. He's like, fine, I'll do it, but I want the money. You gotta kill me off, you know. So, I, I, and, but they didn't do that because they wanted for Force Awakens. I'm sorry, Harrison Ford, uh, but I don't. I don't get like sometimes you get actors with that attitude, and I'm like, listen, idiot, <laughs> you were nobody until this movie came yes. along and made you a star. That's true. You should I, not I, have however, a question however, in your head as to whether or not you'll do the next movie. Yes, you should, even if it sucks. They made you a name. Do the movie. Shut up. However, however, I will give him that. Like I can, I can understand why he wouldn't want to come back for these movies because of of George Lucas is not an actor's director, and yeah. Harrison Ford is very much, you know, <laughs> he was uh, very 
a, a, scra- a scruffy looking nerf he was not afraid like, to really, tell like, george he's... lucas that his ideas were terrible <laughs> exactly so you so he may not have had the best like no one really had the best experience filming new hope you yeah. know and luckily i i i like you know everyone pretty much except mark hamill had a good time filming empire because they had mark hamill in this old set on dagobah and just this just dirty water they never changed and this puppet that they, he couldn't understand because puppeteer was underneath this thing. And, yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but but point, it made a great movie. Um, what like, else do you have, Brandon? I, I was just listening to the Miss Sunday Movies uh, Weekly Planet podcast before, and they were talking about. I was really listening to the old uh, the Back to Future one a couple of episodes ago. They did, but they were uh-huh. talking in that like a similar thing with, you know, the guy who plays George McFly in the first thing. They couldn't get Crispin Glover. Yeah, that's Crispin that's Glover. it. Yeah. yeah. Like, he he created all this fuss about uh, they couldn't get him for the second one because he didn't like them using his likeness, so he sued them and all that. And I'm thinking, like, same thing as, like, with Harrison Ford. Don't do that. Because I'm like, no. dude, you are a nobody before Back to the Future. Let them use your likeness in the second one. Exactly. Don't sue them like, because that's the most, <laughs> that's the best thing that you have ever done. <laughs> nobody cares mm-hmm. about anything else you've done except for that. <laughs> He was good. He, he, was, he was in a couple. I think he was in. Uh, he was in a couple of Bond movies. Yeah, yeah. I think he's, he was he's had good a few in. small parts. It, yeah, yeah, but he's yeah, never really. Uh, it might have even been his dad. I, I might be thinking of Crispin Glover. I might be thinking of Crispin Glover's dad. I could be wrong about that. <laughs> um, but uh, what else do you have for uh, and Hicks? Empire? Hicks from Aliens. He sued Aliens Three for having his face using his likeness. Don't do that, Hicks. Oh boy. Aliens is a great movie. Oh boy. So... <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Aliens is a great. Even though Aliens movie. Three I have seen wasn't Aliens. Good, eh? No, Alien. I think Alien Three gets a bad rap. I think it's not terrible. Yeah. Um. I think it's fine. Well, I think I think um, now that so much news has come out and we've we understood the level of studio interference that that director had to put up with. It's, yeah. It's amazing that it was not worse than it is. <laughs> that was the fan four stick of the. 90s. It was. It like, really that was, was. That was the like Fox. I, apparently has still not learned their lesson and apparently yeah. hates the franchise they used to own too. So you yep. know. Yeah. Sounds about right. <laughs> do you have any more notes for Empire? I think that's it. I do have, um, I do have one other, but it's actually gonna, uh, it's gonna be answered. One of the listener questions. I'm saving it for that. So I, okay. I think that's it. The only other thing I was going to mention is, I like the introduction of the superstar destroyer in Empire yes. Strikes Back. Yes. Because we've we've all yeah. we all know that famous shot of the star destroyer at the beginning of A New Hope, and this one has you see a few star destroyers fly around and you see this one flying up towards the camera and then in the background you see something else even bigger is behind it <laughs> and you're like yes. what is that and then so you get an idea of the size of massive thing. thing yeah and yeah yeah okay no, i'll give that's, you that that's the only thing great. you got anything else or um well just just i think that this is you know whenever whenever someone says that they're like you know i'm not a big star wars fan but i'd like to get into it like and people always ask where do you start with Star Wars? And the automatic response is to usually say, I'll start with New Hope. You know, yeah. I'm not sure you should start with New Hope because I think, I honestly think there, I think there's enough context in Empire Strikes Back to where if you watch this as a standalone film, it works. Yeah, it works as a standalone I film. Suppose, so I, think that- I don't know if it's a good starting point though because I think it would take a lot of the emotion out of it. That's true. But... So I just like well because like I don't I, I see what you're saying though. Work with New Hope like like you know how I was with New Hope like I'm still not a fan of that 20 man chunk in the desert <laughs> yeah. you know I, as much as it furthers the story and establishes character it's still really tough to get yeah, through yeah. you know because it goes by at a snail space but, so you know someone can easily get get turned off by that scene granted everything after that is really great but you yeah, know it takes a little bit of time yeah. to get going but um yeah, but yeah so, I see what you're saying like Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, you'd recommend it on the basis that it's the best and it gets right into the action. And yeah, yeah, like like you say, even if someone hasn't seen A New Hope, they'll still understand what's going on. Like when Obi Wan's ghost appears, they won't know. Who, yeah, they won't know who he is from the last movie, but they'll get it. They'll be like, "Oh, it's his old mentor." <laughs> yeah. Know? Well, did you? Would you say Dark Knight has this has a cliffhanger ending? I'd say it does. Yeah. Uh, Dark Knight. I think I'd say so. You know, it's kind of I like know. what's going to happen next. Yeah, sort of. You know, like like Two Face dies, and and Batman's like, I guess I have to, I have to take the, the take the blame for it and everything, yeah. and you know, and I, yeah. I don't know. I, I just I, I think that those movies are very similar. 
Okay, I, I, I guess. It's a shame they wasted Catching that, fire too. Isn't catching fire is catching. They wasted that, I, that I, stupid I, thing where the Batman didn't kill uh, whatever Harvey don't. It's like, dude, you're reading okay. a note. Why is anyone going to believe love, that? I love Dark Knight Rises, so I'm just going to stay quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I think that movie is incredible. Yeah, it's, um, there's a I lot of good stuff to it, but wow. Yeah, it's, it's... It, it, I think you're. I think you need. Ugh, I don't understand how you don't like Dark Knight Rises, but you. You know what? We're not gonna get into this now. We're we're gonna we're gonna keep going because we're gonna develop into Terminator. I, I just think. Now, like, all right, we won't go into it, but I'll just say like Grace Randolph, because this kind of applies with what we're talking about with uh, Spectre earlier, and I'm sure we'll talk about it with next week. Is like Grace Grace yes. Randolph on the channel will be on the trailer. I really like that channel. Don't agree with a lot of stuff she says, but I always enjoy her opinions. Uh, sounds like Sam Gavin. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, she she has a thing which she says is there's no excuse for a bad story in a movie because getting a script written is the cheapest part of the yes. whole thing and you could have it rewritten at almost zero cost. I mean, you got to pay the writers, obviously. It's the first thing you do, isn't it's it? It's the, the foundation you, you of do. everything. And it's like... Yeah. <sighs> Like, a good story can hold up, like, lack of special effects or even bad acting to a certain extent. But good special effects and good acting cannot hold up a bad story. So, Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's like Michael Bay who, like, starts filming before the script is even finished. It's like, maybe get a good script first <laughs> yeah maybe 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 give give it some time michael but he's like no explosions you yeah know? <laughs> but that that's why i'm so to answer your question that's why i'm so harsh on dark knight rises i think they should have yes. worked a bit more on the script but. yet somehow you are not hard on <laughs> the movie we okay. do not name <laughs> I, I i i really don't understand that like you, I, you we really can't talk give, about like, it we've been we've told everyone gonna we're not going to go into I'm, that i'm, I'm going to give this one sentence you 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 are you are very I you I respect you as a film critic. I really I think, I that, think, I think that you give critic, some great analysis critics. on things. <laughs> but I cannot understand how you consider Godzilla, Dark Knight Rises, you know, to be to be bad movies, and and yet somehow the movie that I won't name here is considered a good movie by you. I don't understand that. I can't I can't fathom. But all film is subjective, so I, I'm okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. Time travel stuff does make it sense a, if you actually watch a movie. It's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Should we do listener questions? So, Ben, <laughs> let's get let's do some listener questions before I kill you. Okay. Uh, listener questions. Excuse me, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Okay, everyone, viewer view, view questions. If you guys don't know, uh, every week Bandit posts something on his Facebook and his Twitter page uh, saying, hey, guys, uh, ask questions, movie or TV related, and or Star Wars, and we'll answer them on the show. And then we do, and you get shout-outs and all that good stuff. So on Facebook, uh, Seb Petey asks, what would, your, what would be your dream Star Wars anthology film? Yes, well, oh, just for the record, these are leftover ones from last week that we didn't get to. So that we're just finishing yes. those up. That's why we didn't ask for any this week. Um, yes. Okay, dream Star Wars anthology films. After watching Empire Strikes Back, I'd love to see one of Han and Lando as young men. Because as Hondo, Han says in uh, several times in Empire Strikes Back, we go back a long way, me and Lando. So I'd love to see them played yeah. by like, I don't know, Han could be Liam Hemsworth and Lando <sighs> could be... Jesus Christ. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> Random black guy. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't think of um, any. <laughs> my, my Michael B. Jordan. Jordan. There um, you go. But yeah, that, that'd so, be good because um, you remember there's the backstory there of that Lando originally had the Millennium Falcon, but he lost. Yes. Sounds like it, it's implied there was some kind of bet that he lost it to Han. And they also knew. Yes. So I'd like to see the two of them, best friends with Chewie, going off on some adventure. And maybe they make some bet throughout the course of the movie of like, oh, I bet you this is going to happen. I'll bet you the Millennium Falcon, and then at the end he gets it. Well, I well they lo- he lost the Millennium Falcon in a game. I, it was a card game. Yeah, I, I got the impression uh, it was some it. gambling thing, but but yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd like um, to see that. Well, we're kind of going to see something about that. We're going to a young Han Solo film from the guys that did the Lego yeah, movie. But I, and I want I Street. want co-star with Lando. That's what I want. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm almost certain Lando's going to be in it. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. So what's I what's your I, one? I don't know if I, I, I'm not sure if I'd really care to see uh, 
that kind of adventure. I don't really? know. It just seems like something. That, I just. I mean, it's it's not one like with all the other ones that you could do. Like you could like like the fact that you could do kind of a like. Have you seen the movie Unforgiven? Oh yeah. With a uh, Clint Eastwood. Like imagine you do Obi Wan on Tatooine with like, but in the style of Unforgiven, yeah. where it's just this I old love man Unforgiven, by trying way. to. That's a great movie. Like, yeah, like he he try, he's trying to just make his way on this really rough and ragged world. He's quick. He, he he's rapidly aging. You get Ewan McGregor back. You can get you can make you can let Darth Maul make an appearance, or um, you know, you know, but, you know, or you know, you go back and you do Old Republic. You know, you hmm. can do a lot of different style of. I'd like to see more stories that kind of explain the the farther reaches of the Star Wars universe, or you know, or explain one small aspect. Like Rogue One, I think is a cool idea for an anthology from which really explains the the which is really explains the MacGuffin of New Hope. Mm. That's kind of what Rogue One's doing. Um so a uh, Young Han Solo film, I I'll, I'm gonna see it of course, but it's not one that I'm just like, oh yes, Young Han Solo, mm. but I don't know. What yeah. what about uh, a lot of people say, oh what about a Boba Fett movie? How do you feel about that? I'd like to see I think Boba Fett is a good character, but I don't want to hear him talk. Yeah. So I don't like I like I don't, you know, he he'll be good to be put in a movie somewhere, like maybe have him appear in Rogue One, maybe have him chase down the Rogue One team for a while or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, hang on, Hello? I'm just getting a phone call. I just got to answer it. I'll be right back. All right, timestamp. Right. Anyway. Right. Okay. So next question. Okay, uh, also on Facebook, uh, Spike Litherland asks, a movie you like but was critically panned? <laughs> well, apart from the obvious one I can't mention, I really like Jumper. Yeah. Okay. I, I thought, yeah, not hardly anybody liked that movie, but I really liked it. I uh, It's yeah. Hayden Christensen actually doing good acting, kind of, and I yeah. thought it was an interesting take on the whole superpower of teleporting. And I, I yeah. would have liked it, it, more movies yeah. to see where his story goes, but nobody well, else liked it. Well, the teleportation it. aspect of it was good. It was just, for me, I thought it was just, going back and rewatching it, it just feels so generic. Like, I, it feels like, I just, nothing about it really seems... No way. Stand out, stand out. Besides the teleportation stuff, everything else, you know, the let, villain, the... Let, let me just tell you something, lore. let me tell you something. That movie, a lot of people didn't connect with it, because uh, the hero doesn't act like a vi- hero. He was kind of more of a, a villain, selfish jerk kind of guy, but he ended up becoming a villain. So that idea of a hero that's not your traditional hero was ahead of its time because a little bit, probably about a year later, Hancock came out, which is kind of the whole uh-huh. premise. And then Megamind came out, and uh, then yes. I think something else came out. So it was actually ahead of its time in terms of that. So I don't think it was generic. You think so? I think it was... The right it was ahead of its time rather than being generic, but it came too early. I'm gonna, let me let me do That's some math said. here. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wasn't expecting that. Hancock came out in um in July of two thousand eight. Yeah. Jumper was in February of 2008, okay. so they were pretty similar to go close together. Um, sure, sure. But I, I, Jump, Jumper for me, like it just it doesn't stand out to me. When I think about it. Uh, I think Jimmy Bell's good, good in it as the other Jumper guy. Um, for a movie for me that I liked, that I had a good time at, at least for the first maybe hour and a half. But a lot of people really hate like with a passion is Transformers Four. Yeah. Um, I thought it was a nice change of pace. From the from three with three just being just at least like I said for the first hour and a half, uh, three or uh, three was just this this cluster bleep of just nonsense happening on screen, and at least for a oh hello and at least for a while uh, that first half of Age of Extinction really felt like okay Michael Bay it's not it's not good it's not like really good but it's, he's doing something different here that I was a fan of. Um, also, the new Ninja Turtles movie I liked. I thought it was I thought it was a uh, stupid fun, uh, which is nice. Shame, so, full yeah. shame, <laughs> full shame. Listen, I can get to a movie that you liked. <laughs> All right, we can do a two-hour rant if you want to. All right, okay. I and I have one more uh, here on sure. Twitter from uh, from J Pablo Hinojosa. Oh, 
asks, uh, or, or he says, um, cinemas help fight pirating if they release the movie digitally. Pirating them would be easier and dent a movie's profits. He wants to know our thoughts Is that on that comment. question? It sounds like something to do with my Netflix thingy. Well, it was a response to your... Um, to your post on Twitter, so I just do, I thought do you want to talk about this because I think we were going to have an argument about it, but then we forgot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, I just I think I just think he, he brings he raises a good yeah, point yeah. of um of if they are released digitally, then it makes them easier to pirate. Yeah, I you know, I don't like, think like, I don't think should I explain what it is for anyone who hasn't seen it? I'll explain it really quickly uh, your in Netflix, like ten seconds. Netflix video. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I I just did Netflix. Uh, I did a video about Netflix saying. Uh, to help curb movie piracy and for more convenience, why don't they ever do a movie where it's released in cinemas and on a website like Netflix or maybe the studio's own website at the same time? And I said that's pretty much, yeah. at least I believe that's going to eventually be the future of cinema. And, um, yeah, that's what he's saying. He's like, oh, but if you release it online at the same time as in movies, then it won't cut down on movie piracy. It'll actually increase movie piracy. I don't believe it will because... I do. <laughs> well, well, has movie piracy <laughs> killed the TV show? What do you mean? Well, TV, same thing. Game of Thrones comes out. It's released on everyone's TV. They can just pirate it, put it on the, put it on Pirate Bay or whatever. Has that stopped that show from being successful? No, nope. but I, I don't think as many people watch Game of Thrones as many people go to the I don't think it matters. <laughs> no, it's, it's very different. Like, it's an interesting topic, movie piracy. We could probably do a whole podcast on that, really. But... We really could if we really. I could do some research and really just do it. But the uh, what's interesting though is like when they've they've done studies on like the kind of people that do movie piracies, and they find that uh, people who do movie piracies, it's usually more of a convenience thing than a money thing, because people yeah. who do pirate, they also spend about thirty percent more money just on going to the movies and buying DVDs and all that because we're just bigger consumers of media. And I say we. Not that I'm one of these people. I'm just, <clears throat> just you know, just speaking, <laughs> assuming that role for the sake of conversation. But <laughs> yes, <laughs> we're just bigger consumers I'll of media. It. I'll admit it. I pirated. I pirate Game of Thrones just because I, I, I have no other way of watching. Exactly. It. I can't go on HBO. You know. Yeah. Just, you know that. Yeah. Same, so, like this, which is a deficit of me because whenever they talk in a foreign language, if they ever have subtitles, I'm completely confused. Yeah. But you know, so it's it's more of a it's more of a convenience thing. So like for me, I always. Like, well, at least I would, hypothetically, I would always like try to go on Netflix and check out like for a lot of the homework assignments and stuff like that. If it's there, yeah. I'll watch it on Netflix. But if it's not there, what am I going to do? I'm not going to spend 30 bucks for a DVD. So that's why I'm like, yeah, just have your movies online. Just yeah, like I if just, Warner Brothers, I, create um, a Netflix like thing. If you don't want to charge people subscription, put commercials. Who cares? You know, that's it's that's exactly the same thing as what happened with music. Um, we talked about this before with a Steve Jobs. Well, then thing. at that point, at that point, do you put commercials on only specific movies on Netflix, or do you put all Netflix movies having commercials? You know, do you have like a special a special thing for, like Star Wars: The Force Awakens is on Netflix same day as release, but you but you well, have like to I, you know. I, I don't I don't know what like if they were to do this hypothetical thing. I don't know what kind of pay model they would do whether they go with a Netflix style thing, whether they put commercials in, I don't know. But what I do know These are the ones we, we need answers. But what I do know is that the people who would watch movies through that medium, that is money that you otherwise would not be getting because people will just go to Pirate Bay. I'll it's give you It's still that. money I'll give you, you that, otherwise wouldn't I, be I, getting. So I, I don't think, see how it could possibly increase piracy because I think I that think this renders shows. and and this I think this renders uh, some like this renders a lot of movies kind of inert because I think in many ways you are you are you are retroactively uh, taking away people's experience of a movie just and, and just because I know so many people you partially included that you know won't you know, if they have the option to go see to go see a movie in the big theater or watch it at home, they're like, "Yeah, I'll watch it at home. It's okay. It's whatever." Yeah, you know, right. and so instead of instead of you know people going, it's like it's like it's like people want them to shorten the wait time between when a movie's out of theaters and when a movie comes on DVD. Hmm. You know, or, you know, and, and I I don't think that they should because then you have people like my parents who will just be like, "I'll wait till it comes out on DVD in six weeks." You know, like that yeah. that, that suddenly. It, and so now, if it's on, if like 
if you have movies like like Star Wars: The Force Awakens, like not a big movie, but your casual movie fan, people who go three four times a year, if it, if they see that it's on oh oh it's on Netflix or oh it's on uh, like like the interview. You know, like, oh, it's on Netflix or, you know, like they'll they'll say, OK, well, let's watch it at home or, you know, we'll pay the extra two bucks to watch it at home as opposed to paying the ten dollars to go see it on this massive theater. And that and I guarantee you they will have a better experience in the movies than they will at home. But if you give them that option to stay at home, then they're going to do that. Yeah, yeah. So that's just that's my main concern with this whole Netflix I thing. Because that's that's you believe that's, that movies are a magical place. And it creates a, a magical environment in which movies can be viewed. I believe that I believe that experience of being able to sit in a totally yes. pitch black room where I can't see anyone else and not being allowed to communicate with another human being. That is such a social interaction. That's why I need not I to be in a room full of people that I cannot see or interact with in any way. Because it adds I'm so saying, much, doesn't I'm it? Saying J. J. Abrams, I'm saying J.J. Abrams does not use an IMAX film <laughs> camera for you to watch his movie in 16 by 9 ratio. Yeah. Dude, a movie's, for you a, to movie's watch a movie! It. Who cares? It's the experience! Oh, okay, so, so when... When Star Wars Force Awakens comes out on DVD, you're not going to buy it because that means you're watching it. That's not you're what, watching that's it not on your I'm, tiny TV screen instead of a giant screen. I will go see Force Awakens in the theater as many times as I possibly can, but when I can't, I will do the next best thing, which is my 70-inch flat, <laughs> which is my 70-inch living room TV on Blu-ray. <laughs> that's that's my next best option. Yeah. But like I'm saying, like if if you had not seen Force Awakens and you're like, well. I mean, I could go, but I'll just pay for it on Netflix. Yeah. And like, no, don't do yeah, that. But that's the thing. Is like, be cheaper, but. that's the thing. It's like, it's funny because since I made that video, people are like, "No, you're taking away my movies." I'm not. No, no one's ever taking away your movie cinemas. I'm just saying, be nice to have this other option for antisocial people like me who don't want to drive 45 yes. minutes each way just to see a movie. I don't want to drive all that way to see Maze Runner it's two. Thoughts, it, I would it rather is, just watch it, it from home. It's like that. <laughs> It is thoughts like that that killed the comic industry. That's killing the comic industry. Yeah. It's thoughts like that that have killed the physical uh, medium of, of music. Yeah, well, industry. that was ridiculous. So now, it should never have, be a physical medium with, with music. I don't know. I I, I always like the tangibility of, of but vinyls I, and CDs. But, I, but I think it's I think it's, it's just, inevitable that when a movie comes out, it will come out everywhere simultaneously in theaters, at home, on Netflix, and the DVD will be released digitally. Immediately with the movie, I think that's eventually going to happen. No need for piracy; you get it right there because most pirates do it for convenience. Well, people people are still going to pirate the movie. Yeah, well, that's inevitable. That's always going to happen. Well, then why? Then why is this such a concern? Because you're making money that you otherwise wouldn't make. Because, like I said, a lot of pirates don't pirate if they don't have to, because it's just a convenience thing. Okay. Okay, I understand. I understand. You hate America. <laughs> That's what this all comes down to. You hate America. I, I you hate destroy, outdated You want to destroy my talkies. I have, I... You want to destroy my talkies. That's what you want to do. <laughs> you want to ruin my movies. We my motion pictures. You know what? This, 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 yeah. is, this conversation is something that's been going on since the dawn of time. The old generation yes. like you, Trey... Hanging on to the past, afraid of technology, pa- afraid of change. It's not. It's not that there's something wrong with young change. people like me, old man. It's not as man. good as what we had before. <laughs> it's not as good. I would, <laughs> my sixteen by nine ratio TV is not as good as my two point thirty five screen. I can go drive. Well, I can get my parents to drive me to. All right, listen, listen, drive. old man. But, you wanna, you wanna, okay. you think. That releasing a digital movie is going to increase movie piracy. Well, do you have you also considered that releasing a digital movie cuts down in cost because you don't have to produce and ship a physical disc? Do the math on that. How much more money do you think you're going to make digitally, old oh, man? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But my point is, that you're I just afraid of change. You're afraid, aren't you? I'm afraid of losing your old my grandpa. Experience. I'm afraid of the theaters looking cheap because <laughs> people aren't going to the movies anymore. So, I'm afraid of theaters. Well, you can all still go to the movies. You know, you can. Yeah, not as much. You can sit there with your like sonogram and your hearing aid and go, "What? Wow. What happened?" <laughs> ah! I think this is incredible that you <laughs> that you pictured me as this persona of, that, of this old man because I'm like considering you're 16 years old. <laughs> yeah, but no, listen, that, that, I pro- that you probably double. No, nah, it's, it's just fear of change. Me. You know, the guy, 
the guy who invented like the postal system in England when he first invented like ha- the idea of having a letterbox out the front of your house when he invented that he thought it was going to destroy the fabric of society because before that if a guy wanted to get to know a young girl he had to go to the father and ask permission in order to speak to the girl but with letterboxes he could this, write a letter this, this straight to the girl is, bypass the father this is, this is, so this he is believed it would bandit. collapse the whole fabric of society no, it didn't and it at all. Has. And it kind of no, has. No, it hasn't. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> social, social. Look, a lot of things might have collapsed whoever, society, whoever but it's not male. Okay, <laughs> the ability to get a letter at home has not collapsed any of society. <laughs> but see, what uh, no, you're doing I'm now is kind social, of like that as well. You're like, no, this is. You cannot deliver the same thing to me in a different format. That will destroy everything. I'm just saying it renders it. it Look, Brandy, Brand, you cannot, you can literally not tell me that seeing a movie at home is just the same as seeing it in the theater. Well, of course it's not. That's not true. Of course it's not. Exactly. Unless you have like a, it's the one of those experience. giant TVs in your house. Even then, it's not yeah. going to be the same size. It's not. And, and the of course, quality, the cinemas, like when they banned Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon two, because it's going to be on Netflix. That's the reason they give is we don't want to promote movies that are. Yeah, can be seen on a giant screen or on a little thing. No doubt, of course they're going to say that because the fact that they have a big screen is the only thing they have going for them. It's a good and monopoly. And a good surround system and a good, and a good picture and, a, and an overall experience. Well, sometimes. Well, so, well, yeah, you're forgetting when the projector exception. dies or when the sound's too loud okay. or when the heating's not working so you're freezing or when there's people sitting well, a few forgetting. years rows away that won't shut up or when you sit in chewing gum or when your feet stick to the floor because there's all this spilled okay. coke you're forgetting all that times no I think you're I'd for, rather I'm just watch it at home if I have the option. You're also forgetting when your video, when your digital video buffers, <laughs> when uh, when there's a power outage and your power goes out in your TV, or you're forgetting whenever the DVD or the DVD or Blu-ray is scratched and it skips. You know, you're forgetting, and you know, and you're forgetting okay, well, digital you know, Blu-ray, the distraction, the distraction of the outside world. <laughs> okay, so so apparently, I do, I do, being I in a cinema is more 75. comfortable than being in your own home. Okay. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying when you're watching a movie, Dan, that you, I'd, I'd much rather be in a cinema. Okay, well, than... scratches on a DVD okay, don't count because we're talking about a digital file. Okay, well, then your video buffers well, d- or the quality sucks. What is, you is your internet from 1992? Wi-Fi. Like, I don't think so. <laughs> it's not, not how it works. I could have got Steve Jobs on my phone. I could have got Steve Jobs on my phone. But I went out and I went and saw it in the theater and I had a great time. All right, all right. It's just... Look, because the question was mostly about piracy and all this. I'll, my final thing on this, and you can have your final statement too, of course, but my final statement okay. would be what Steve Jobs said, which I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, what Steve Jobs said when the music industry went to him and they said, how do we stop people from pirating movies? And he said, you cannot stop people, not pirating movies, pirating songs. He said, you cannot stop people from pirating songs. The only way to combat it is to make a convenient and legal way for people to purchase music that's the best way you're going to compl- you're eliminate music. It doesn't completely eliminate it, but that's how everyone gets their music now, legally, through iTunes. Yes. Once the movies studios make a legal version of that strategy, that's the only time yeah. they're really going to actually put a dent in piracy because otherwise, why would anyone care? I rest what my case. What about opening anyway. nights? <laughs> What about what about opening nights, Bandit? Imagine imagine that, you know, you have all these nerds yeah. who want to go out and go see The Force Awakens because they want that experience. And you're telling me now that most of those nerds would be like, well, let's go, let's go get it on my phone. And now they're all going to be watching it on their phone at home. Yeah. Okay, well, first of all... Nerding out, but nerding out First of all, if that's what they want, who are you to say otherwise? And secondly... I'm not... Whoa! Hey well, now. hey, if they want to now watch it on their phone, will. that's their problem. What? Why should you have to say to them, "No, I'm going to remove I'm saying, that I'm possibility" because you have to do I'm what I say. You're giving them the option to hinder their film going. Experience. Hey, if that's what they want to do, that's their problem. But that's only because you're giving them the option. So what? I'm saying if that's how they want to duh. view it and they're paying money, why would you want to be like, "No"? We have to, 
we have to end this because now we're getting because now we're getting into that if you want to pay the money and apparently I can't think objectively from a CEO's perspective <laughs> according to your comments. So we're gonna I, we I, we have to end this now. I was um, gonna make another point there, but I can't you. remember what it was. <laughs> that wasn't even gonna be my main uh, point. <laughs> oh no, I remember now. Oh boy, look, opening night. I, I think I said this in the video. It would be like a sporting event. You know, football mm-hmm. game. If you're a really hardcore fan, you can go to the actual stadium and watch it in person. Otherwise, you just hang out and watch it on TV with your friends. Opening opening day of Justice League, if we lived in that world, would be like that. You could have a barbecue with all your friends around at your house and just watch it. That's a shame. That's a bloody shame. <laughs> what it is. I don't know. Some people, some right. people go, but if you've got like 20 people there, then that's not 20 movie tickets. That's true, but you need to do the math of... Is the extra money you would lose through that less than the amount you would lose through movie piracy? There's no way it's more than what you would lose through movie piracy. So it's definitely a better move, especially considering that less people would pirate I if they get a better quality. I don't want the movie going. I don't want the movie theaters to die. <laughs> I don't think they'll ever fully die, but I think as this picks up more, no, but they'll the be less and less. No, but the same way CDs will never fully die. The same yeah. way. That CD section in Walmart or whatever will never fully die. But there still be – they'll be like, oh, yeah, CDs are a thing. Like I don't want to have to drive by a movie theater and be like, oh, that was a thing. Yeah, I remember that. I want to be able to go by there and be like, yeah. oh, man, new movie at the movies. Let's go. Like it's a, it's a, it's an event. It's a – all right, I, I'm done. But I'm I don't done. know. I'm Just the whole idea of going to a movie, when you really think about it, it's archaic. In this world, this Excuse computerized me? internet world – it spans the globe. We still wow. have to walk to an actual physical building now to see a movie. Yes. When you can when you have yes. personal viewing devices at home. That's Stone Age comparison. A six inch a six inch screen versus a three hundred foot Well then go yes, see the three hundred foot one. But if you don't care about that, then the option should be there to watch it at home. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm saying America's lazy and that, that that they're gonna just want us to watch it on the phone. It sounds like you want people to enjoy movies, but you only want them to enjoy it the way you think is right. Not the way that suits I'm them. I'm saying I'm saying the way filmmakers want them to enjoy it. <laughs> movies aren't made for them to be viewed on your phone. Yeah, yeah. Well take Steve Jobs. Did that need to be viewed on a giant screen? I think it Really? Helps. There were giant CGI explosions in that? I don't think just so. Because, just because no. there's never, there's never CGI explosion does not mean it doesn't need to be viewed. Yeah, but see, that's screen. that's my point though. Like stuff like Star Wars, you want to see that on the big screen for the special effects. It immerses you into the world. Stuff, it sends nah, you into the matter. story. Like I think, uh, yeah, like, uh, and you know, there are certain aspects that a film projector puts on the screen that I don't think regular other movies can. Like for example, you know, certain like the three acts of Steve Jobs were shot in fifteen mil- or in, uh, it wasn't fifteen millimeter. It was like thirty millimeter. Uh, and then like 70 millimeter and then uh, no it was 35 millimeter 65 millimeter and then digital and you could really tell the difference when you're watching on a screen it's just sure. it's just it's it's a, it's a little thing like that like it's sure being I, being in a I, cinema I, I, I that's want... dark and there's minimal distractions obviously you're gonna it's gonna be easy to immerse yourself in the story and that but yeah still a good story will hook you in regardless of whether it's on a big screen or a medium screen or a small screen okay <laughs> that argument's been brewing for a long time (laughs) yeah okay i I wish that day was here yeah i have to see a lot of movies now and i don't want to drive all the way for them so if i could would be great i think this is this is this only started because i saw that video of yours and i was just like what what does he say and it's just kind of it's just kind of like i remember i got home from school and i'm just like what is this and i saw the video i was like oh no but but don't but don't you think like you can you can see the pieces of the puzzle coming together can't you Oh yeah, and that's why I'm so adamant about it not happening yeah. because I know just because like look look at what has happened in the last in in just the last 20 years, so many physical media's have died because and it's not even a matter of whether or not Dude, you Dude, how is it that you're half you my age but you're arguing for the old stuff? And I'm because arguing seen, for the new I technology. Know. Because I know how it feels to be in the cinema and have that experience. <laughs> I love go- I love the movies. I told you my Mission Impossible story, didn't I? When I first saw Rogue I saw Ghost Protocol and the IMAX ratio changed. Oh, that's right. Yeah. How the perspective. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've said that story and that kind of you know and seeing Dark Knight on the big screen in IMAX, you know, things like that have yeah. really shook. I've shifted my 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 perspective and my views on film and you know. 
people don't spend millions of dollars and shoot with these red at like the red epic camera for movies like The Walk or The Martian, and only to have like you know we'll, we'll put it on a 720p fo- uh, phone right. or you know or your or your square rounded okay, TV. I, I see what you're saying, like, but no. let, let me ask you this. Perfect example. We talked about Empire Strike Back today. The very first time you watched that, yes. did you watch that in the movie or on your TV with the, at home? It was on my phone. <laughs> you serious? Yes. <laughs> and did that diminish your well, enjoyment wait, well, of Empire Strikes well, Back first, by watching well, it on a small screen? Well, the first time I remember watching it, the first time I remember watching it ever, it was probably on, on like an probably old TV. On a t- like I said, I had an old TV that had a okay, and on it. I'm guessing it, it did not diminish your enjoyment of the movie, right? No. So what's the problem? But it, it doesn't matter. I saw it in the theater. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I knew that was going to come back to haunt me because because <laughs> I'm like because I'm like shoot. One of my favorite movies was the first time I saw it. It yeah. was on my phone. But Oops. that's all right. But, I knew I was but when come back um, to bite me. but when Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon Two comes out, it'll be very interesting. We'll we'll keep an eye on that because that's that movie is going to be money. released on Netflix at the same time as it's. In cinemas, it won't be in American cinemas. So it'll be very interesting to see yeah. how that movie does in America. Because as I said in the video, if it does well in America, even though it wasn't in cinemas, then we're probably going to see more studios starting to try and do that where you have multi-platforms release all at the same time. And cinemas yeah. are not going to like I don't think I don't I don't I don't think it's going to do well in America. Um, just because there's not I don't I don't really feel a huge clamoring for it. I think people are going to watch it, of course, mm. because it's a Netflix movie. But I don't think it's going to be like. Gadget Tiger Hidden Dragon's a huge hit, despite not being. It's not. It's not gonna be like the interview, yeah. where the interview made you know upwards of like fifty million dollars, something like that, on Netflix alone. You know, it's, I don't think it's gonna do anything yeah. like that. Well, we'll have to wait um, and see. I mean, it'll be hard because we won't I mean, have I'm anything a, I, else to compare it to, I suppose. But. I'll tell you what. I'm excited to see how this is all gonna play out. Even though I'm pretty sure I know the outcome, mm. I just don't want. I don't want kids to have their experience in a movie be. Oh, I saw it on a phone. Like, cause imagine if I saw Empire Strikes Back um, in a big screen at the theater. Mm. My mind would have been blown. You know, just, I just, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think yeah. We need to, but it, I, think, it kind I think of, this is a good way. To, I, I, think I think we should, is. like, yeah, it, I'm, I'm reminded of, like, I saw a documentary on, on something. But the, they were talking about, like, in the old filmmaking where when they were edit shots, they'd physically pull out the film and they'd have to cut it with scissors and stick it to where it was. And the old guy, he was sort of showing how they did it. And he was kind of, it was basically the way he was talking about it was like, you know, there's obviously a certain sentimental attachment to being able to actually do it this way. And you actually feel the film and you just can't get that with a computer. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're right. You can't get that with a computer. But computers are a lot easier to edit with you, old man. You're living in the past, old man. That's what I was thinking. I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't go against the like, the like digital versus film. Like argument where you know, like filming things on film. I will, I will agree that it looks better when you when you shoot a movie on yeah, film. Yeah. Like if it's projected on seventy millimeter, like I think, like hateful eight looks oh, incredible. Yeah. Well, like just sorry, I, I wasn't wise. talking about like in terms of how a movie shot. I was just using that example. No, I, I mean, I mean editing wise. I'll, I'll, I'll agree yeah. with you with that though. I do agree that digital is easier and digital should be oh, no, the that's, one that's used. That's not what I mean though. I mean, like I was just using that as an example of that kind of thinking that. There's a certain sentimental yes. attachment to doing this the old way, but if the new way is yeah. better, just change to it. But my, to my hell with that nostalgia. The new that's not what I'm saying. When terms, when, <laughs> when terms with like Netflix and dig, and like uh, streaming things, I don't think that that is a better way than watching it in a in a cinema. Mm. Um, that being said, Bandit, this has been a wonderful <laughs> show. Um, well, yes. what, another great episode of the Movie Mania podcast, Bandit, where can people well, find you? Oh, actually, because we forgot to mention this last time, thank you to Milan Jeftik, the Russian comic book geek. I wrote I wrote that down, I wrote that down. Um, and while we're, while I was, we're thinking Milan Jeftik... <laughs> when I was editing yeah. last week, in one of the sections where, uh, after you know we put an intro where we were talking, we both mentioned, we're like, oh, we gotta we got to remember to you know, say thanks to it, and then we both forgot <laughs> again. <laughs> Exactly. So I wrote this down. I, I, it's on both my hands and on the paper. Uh, Jeffick. Also, the Russian uh, comic book geek. You can check him out on YouTube. Yes. He designed the artwork that you see for our channel. Thank you, Milan. 
Yes. Um, also, uh, rate, if you guys could rate us on iTunes, for you guys to do listen on iTunes or whatever, if you guys could leave a review, maybe, I'd like that, you know, uh, just, a, just a just a small gesture. I just thought I'd throw that out there. And of course, like the video, if you're, if you're watching this on YouTube, like the video, leave a comment down. What do you guys want to see us do in the future? What do you have suggestions for us? And ask questions on YouTube as well, not just uh, Twitter and Facebook, because we'll, we'll read those yeah. as well. Um, Bandit, where can the people find uh, They can you? find me on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as Bandit Incorporated and they can find you they can find me on Twitter Instagram and uh, YouTube all at Podcast Media or right here on Movie Mania uh, thank you all for watching and we'll be back next week with uh, Spectre all in spoilers detail thank you all for watching our Movie Maniacs